guessing we don't have Will today. Because I can't see him. Um, does anyone else want to just do a backup recording just in case? Please. No one? Okay. Oh, I can do it. Thank you. Is it is it Sue? Yeah. Thank you, Sue. Uh, I have to give you you get the special <laughs> co host permission. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um okay. So, um, what I'm, what I've decided to do is I rushed through the two, two lectures of structure last week. So that way we could get on to doing a bit of coding lectures and workshops instead. Um, so, uh, this is today I'm going to go over, uh, patterns and uh, dispatching and weaving. It's probably like the, the simplest thing that I think um, I, I would expect anyone to do. So please let me know if I am um, making this too simple for you guys. It's, you're probably not gonna say that. No one's ever gonna say, hey, this is too easy. Um, but just, just let me know just so I can um, you know, add some complexity to it. Or in reverse, um, if I am going too fast, then I am perfectly happy for you guys to um, interject. You know, just interrupt me because usually I'm used to seeing, uh, you know, a room of faces that are like, what? And um, I don't get that at the moment. I just get sort of text, and so I would rather you guys say something because the value of um, the value of asking that question now and getting me to respond is going to be better than sort of rewatching the video because rewatching re me just means you see, you're seeing me say the same thing repeated over and over and potentially even sped up um, versus actually asking then, you know, I can, I can try and explain it a different way so that it makes sense. Cool. So, um, if I was teaching uh, dispatching and weaving or pattern making um, in, a, in a previous course, I'd be trying to teach you guys how to do finger joints for laser cutting. Um, did you guys do anything that looks... These are there's different types of finger joints apparently. Um, did you guys do any anything that looks remotely like this with your laser cutting um, in term one? No. I'm totally doing it. I did before. You did before. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, but the, the majority of the class hasn't, I'm guessing the Cole Hua has done it. It's not to single you out, but if you've done that Beal course, then you've probably done finger jointing. Cool. And then, so, I guess my what I usually do is I'll, I would say, okay, well, we've got a line and we want to finger joint that line. So let's let's pseudo code the process of doing that. And um, I'm going to really ask you guys to interact with me now. So I want to treat this like a conversation. Um, imagine I'm a com like a robot or a computer. Um, and I like if you, if you asked a computer to bake a cake or a robot to bake a cake, you can't just say, go grab flour and pour it in a bowl. I mean, sorry, go grab flour and mix that with egg because the, the computer or the robot doesn't even understand that that sort of like implied, implied factor that you want them to put it in a bowl and use a wooden spoon to mix it up, et cetera. I know. So, so just imagine I'm, I, I kind of refer, refer to this type of character as like two brain cell guy. Imagine I've only got two brain cells and give me the instructions on, on what needs to happen to make a, a finger joint. And I'll, I'll just bring up the image. So we, we care about, you know, this type of finger joint, right? 
So does one does anybody want to just mm. add, make a suggestion of the first first step? Please. You. Yeah, go on, Megan. Um, I forgot the term for it, but you have to split it so it's like the dashed line. Right. Okay. Yep. Let's forget. We're not using grasshopper. Okay. Yep. Let's we're just. We're just. We're just going to use like English or you know like as in just logical thinking. So okay. yeah, split. And when so when you say split or divide or whatever. Yeah. Divide. Um, what's what's one of the critical things about dividing? Um, you know, to be able to get this type of pattern. There's something about the division because I, I could divide it here and here and here, right? You or have to have like an, an equal amount of cool. equal lines. Cool. And, you know, if I just uh, now, you know, Grasshopper does a lot of that thinking for you and so does Rhino. So we'll assume that these are now like equal line segments, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I've divided that into equal line segments. And now what do I, now what's the next step? Jack, seeing as you, you, uh, you chipped in. No, it's, did I, oh yeah, whatever. Oh good. It, look, there's no, also there's no wrong, there's no wrong uh, answer here, right? We're, we're just working something out. And I guess what I'm trying to teach you guys is, is the, sometimes the process that needs to go in through your head as you're approaching a problem, sometimes you actually have to step out how you need to get to the end. You know, I've got a line and I've got a finger joint. How do I get to the end? And this naturally happens in my head. And sometimes you've got to sort of like learn that natural process of pseudo coding. So, sorry, Jack, what would you do uh, next? Select the, select the even, even index of the of the line, like yep, the cool. second one, the, the, yep. the fourth yep, you, one. You've, uh, you've actually hit like a lot of steps here, but this is really good. Okay, so um, when we divide these up, we're dividing them up, you know, and they're actually getting, we're going to assume they have an order because, you know, a grasshopper assumes that things have orders, but other, like when we draw in design or in architecture, you don't really think about the direction that a line was drawn or the order in which segments are, are in. Um, but ooh, that's a tiny dot. Let's make that 40 and we'll make that zero just so that we'll... Ooh. I should be using Grasshopper right now, but whatever. Boo. This is usually a lot easier with the whiteboard as well. I've decided the, the wobbly webcam with the paper was, was not good, right? That was very difficult to watch, right? So, okay. <laughs> so we're assume that, um, we'll assume that these have an order and that they go from left to right, for example. Um, that's good enough, right? Um, and then uh, what you what you said, Jack, was we need to pick out the even, the even, even index. Yeah, index. so the even indexes would be zero, two, four, and six, right? Yep. And then what are we going to do with them? Uh, uh, move move that lot, move each index up as a uh, move move each index up. Uh, certain amounts, yeah, equal, equally certain amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you move, you you're gonna move them up by by an amount, basically. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna move them down just to keep this clean. Um, one thing. So the critical word that you just said then move. Um, like if I was, this isn't really the problem that we need to solve today, but if I was doing a um. If I was doing this particular exercise on like, uh, you know, a box, a rectangle on a line that looked like so, um, then the term move is going to be a really uh, fragile and fickle one uh, because in this case, you said move it up, right? Yeah. Um, if I was doing the same process on this line, 
moving it up, pro, you know, it's not it's going to do this, right? So can you think of a can you think of a more I guess grasshoppery or rhino-ish term that would be better to describe moving away from the line rather than moving up? Moving in uh, and y uh, axle or in no no. Axle. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the question I'm gonna throw this question to anyone else who who else wants to have a go. What rather than moving up, what's the difference between moving up? And moving out. Do you guys know that term? Does that have to be perpendicular? Yeah. So we're gonna we're we're saying, you know, if I want if I want this to be finger jointed, then the finger joint relationship is going to be perpendicular, right? So yeah, you could say move perpendicular. Do you guys? Does anyone know? Um, does anyone yeah. know like a term similar to move perpendicular? Have is you offset? Yeah. So we have offset as well. So, so, you know, these could offset by that distance, right? And that would give you, that would give you a good result in any orientation. Cool. We've offset and now what do we want to do? We've got to, I've got to do this by the way. Oops. What's the next step? Andrew, what did you just do there? Did you just split and repeat? I've just, what I've done is I've just drawn the line segments based on what, you know, the way that people have described it. I've literally done it manually. I'm just quick. There are ways of trimming and doing this stuff in Rhino, but I, it's just faster for me to just draw, draw lines between dots, right? Okay. Um, let me get rid of the dots. So we've got these line segments now. Now what do we want to do? Connect them. Link them. Right. And when we connect them, you know, just remember, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. Um, when we connect them, do, are we doing this? You got to tell me how to connect them. So, so how am I going to connect them, guys? Endpoint to endpoint. Okay, that if if you said Sorry. that to, if you said as in, to me, as in the um the yeah. end of zero to the start of one, the end of one to the start of two. Exactly. Yep. So we've got to we've got to basically create a continuous connection across them from end to start, end to start, so on and so forth, right? And that that effectively creates that finger joint. Yeah. There's one thing though, when when we're doing stuff with Grasshopper, there there are you know lots of different ways that we could have offset these lines, but generally what happens, the the simplest way of doing it, like the I'd say the the beginner way of doing it, is you you basically split these two lists apart, and and that process in Grasshopper is is usually done by dispatching. Um, and you would then end up with two separate lists. You, you'd end up with a list up here. Um, I'm going to delete this guy as well, just to make this a little bit simpler. One, two. You would end up with this list and this list, and they would have their corresponding um, items in each list. There'd be zero, one, and two, and zero, one, and two, right? And, and now what we're really talking about here is, okay, we've, we've done a function that pulls a list apart and sends part of that list in one direction and part of it in another. And then we can do what we want to, to either part, A or B. And then there's a process where they need to come back together so that Grasshopper knows how to, to relate them to each other. And that would be called weaving, okay? So, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna actually code finger jointing, um, but I'm just pointing out that this particular technique that I'm trying to teach you is one that is broad and it should be applicable to pr practically every design that you're doing. There's gonna be probably some point in there that there's gonna be a dispatch or a weave. Um, let's talk about trusses because 
trusses are rife for using um what rife's the wrong word trusses are like the perfect um design uh example of using dispatches and weaves and patterns and stuff like that and if i just type in trust types and into into google now there's no like there's so many different trust types and there's it's very it's it's almost pointless trying to learn like all their names but um one of the more common ones that you'll you'll see are um pratt trusses and uh these mul multiple king post trusses and then i don't know why they don't have, this, have it in this one but warren where's the warren truss there the warren warren's probably one of my favorite trusses or warren with verticals these these are, are some of the more efficient trusses that you'll see um, throughout um, the design process, like th throughout doing new modern designs. These these Pratt and Ho ones. Um, do you guys just just to ping back to what we did last week? Do you, you see the see these members running through? You know they're running through. These guys are sort of like sloping inwards to the center point. And these ones are sloping outwards to the to the supports, right? Why why do you why do you think the these two exist? What you know, why why would someone pick one over the other? Just think and we're really talking about last like a lot of the stuff I talked about last week. Perhaps to distribute the force to somewhere else. Yep, yep. So that yeah, oh. all these all these mm. members in structures are distributing forces to somewhere else, right? So I have a guess. Yeah, go for it. I mm. would I would guess that the Pratt is good for being supported from the middle, whilst the Hove is being supported from the outer, like from the left and right. Um, was it the other way around? No. So both of these are being support. Both of these are being supported by the ends. You can see those okay. little supports there. Yeah. Um, no, think think about, remember, we, what, what did we talk about? We talked about the direction of, of the way forces are being applied. You can have forces being applied in compression or tension or in bending, right? And some things are really good at handling compressive force and some things are really good at handling tensive tensile forces and some things, are, they can do both, right? So, so if I put a load on on these bridges, then the and the the worst bending load would be in the very centre. Then uh, we can be fairly certain that these particular members are either going to be in only compression or only tension based on the angle that they're 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 running. Right? Does that does that make sense? How about how about one in a in a few weeks time when we learn how to actually draw um, draw this stuff in a like a physics engine finite element analysis tool we can play around with these and, and we'll work like we'll see what their actual results are right okay yeah cool but okay so we want to draw a truss and the first one that we'll go we'll draw is we'll draw a warren truss um, and we're going to use we're going to use um, dispatch and weave to do that. So, pseudocoding it though to begin with. Normally, what I do is I I assume that we're going to start any truss with two two roughly parallel lines. So if I draw two lines here, um, and I'll just pull the image of the truss up again, we're going to we're going to do exact that same exercise we did with the the um, the finger joint. So let's pseudocode this thing. What can we what can we see? There's a few there's a few things that are gonna need to happen to these lines to be able to generate this truss, right? So what let's just talk about some of those things. Do 
can you see any any relationships between you know what's what's happening between the bottom line and the top line for example where are the like are these equally divided uh looks like it yep so we'll assume they're equally divided yep um but look this joint up here it's not it's not in the same position as the the joint below right but it also looks like these are equally these are the same spacings as as these on the bottom the top flange spacings uh, have the bot the same spaces at the bottom and i guess we can assume that's about 50 that's going to be 50 percent through right? right everyone can see that so what that means is the length the the length of this top member is actually like it's one equal unit shorter but half of that on either side and you know we could we could actually code this to to reduce the the length of the top one first but i'm, I'm going to say we're going to deal deal with that later that's a problem we can solve at the end um but what 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 i'm suggesting here is so if we can see here one two three four five six there are six seg segments here and we've got two lines if we run the same process on both lines for as long as possible then that's going to reduce the size of our script so if i want to divide these lines so that it creates a point along the lines for the bottom and the top so a point uh at this point here and then can you go see my cursor by the way yep cool a point here yep. a point here and a point there then what we probably want to do is actually divide doubly doubling the the number of segments that we want so if we want six then if we divide this process by 12 then we are generating all the points that we need and then we can cull out the ones that we don't need yeah yep so that's that's a that's a generally a fairly good process to work with um you know work over producing stuff um and then removing is is a really good exercise because um it saves you having to then go work out how to generate that stuff again um in a different way so if i just bring those text dots back and we just do that zero and one and two and so on if you remember back to you know 10 minutes ago when i spoke about the finger joints um i think it was jack jack mentioned oh. jack mentioned you know grabbing all the equal um segments and doing something with them can you see you know if we actually just run this up actually rather than saying something is equal rather i'm going to say okay hit if we run a test for that to say if something is for uh is odd and that test returns back uh a true sorry sorry even that test returns back a true value then then all of these points will end up having a pattern system based on that odd even test like so right so now rather than thinking about um whether or not something is odd there's just a pattern that says true false true false true false and now if i want to start drawing this truss like drawing the the f um, webs what what rule set should i follow can you you, you guys can sort of see we've got the this the ghost of this truss kind of there if I was going to draw the first web, from which point should I draw it from? To which point? T to F. Yep, which T to F? So the first T on the bottom to this first F on top. Right, and then the left. Can, you, can you make a more generalized statement about how they should be connected all together across the whole thing now using that same instruction set? Um... Because if I now, if I let's say I've drawn that, that T to F, right? What what would the next member be? 
the T on the bottom. So you'll be Hmm. Well look, where where would this if I just drew a line from here to here and now I'm at F, where where could I go next? But the bottom will always be T and the top will always be F. Yeah, so I could go from F to the T, right? Yeah. And then repeat, rinse and repeat, right? Oh repeat, yeah, right. That makes sense. Yeah. So basically, you know, string string a a polyline between the 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 trues and the falses from list A and list B. String that together um, in a consecutive order, right? And and we've now got these this the the web for that truss. And I'm going to delete the the flange control lines. What's the what's the next step? How do we we want to draw the web? I mean, not web. Sorry, the flanges. I know I know we had pretty much the right flange here but I'm gonna say we can't use that we've got to draw it from scratch and so what is what is a way that we can draw these flanges now that we've got these these points and they've been identified as trues or falses um, pardon after uh, T to T. Okay, so for the bottom flange, what what should I be doing? The neck, the <laughs> first day and second uh, repeat. Yeah, so string a polyline together from all the trues, right? Is that what yeah. you... Yeah, I'm just paraphrasing so that... Cool, and then what would I do with the top? Same <laughs> as... Sorry, Jeffrey, go on. Yeah, uh, connect all fours. Yeah. Yep. Fourth cool. Line. In consecutive yeah. order with a polyline. Yes. Yeah, same as below. Excellent. And guess what? We've drawn a truss, right? And it's taken us, you know, a little bit longer than actually just doing it without thinking. But now let's code this, right? And we're going to need to code this using dispatch and weave for it to work well. So, um, hopefully, all of you have got Grasshopper, Rhino, and Grasshopper up. Um, does maybe if, uh, if I, um, can people put their hands up or something? Is there a way to, um, just let, does it, uh, I guess put your hand up if you don't have Rhino open and once, once Grasshopper's running, you can put your hand down, but I don't think there's, there's no hands, right? Oh, um, there's no Pardon? Oh, yes, there is. Good. Okay, so hands are up if you don't have it open. I, w I don't want to see any hands, and then I'll get started. So does that does that make sense? Has, has anyone run... Have you guys run through, like, this type of pseudocode before? Or has it just been, like, bam, like, straight into Grasshopper? You just kind of go in and mess around until I get what I want. And if that's yep. the right approach or not. It, look, there's nothing wrong with that. It's more, I guess it, I would call that more like art rather than design. Um, like, like you're messing around, but you're trying to get something that you know will be good. Or like, as in you want to get an outcome. You're trying to achieve something and, and you're messing around to get that, that outcome. Or you're just messing around and just seeing what you get. Is, what's, is it, which one would it be? I think now whilst I'm learning it in first year, it's more of a messing around to see how to do it. And then yep. next time I know what to do. Good. Cool. Well, we're going to let, we're going to start migrating that towards having an out, like a goal. Um, because, you know, when we're just, sometimes when we're designing, we know what we want and sometimes we want to experiment. It's a lot, it's easy to experiment, I find. The hard thing is experimenting and creating an outcome but not knowing how you actually got to it and not being able to replicate it later. Um, Orki and Amanda, are, um, do you have Rhino or is it just um, being slow? My, my validation key uh, expired. Okay. And yeah, so has mine. Problem. Yeah, okay. but it's working now. It's so working? Okay. 
Okay, I was just checking if it's going to be like an hour. Okay. Well, I spent since we started trying to get to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. Good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Okay, just just so you're aware as well, I'm I'm a big this is the first time using gra like Grasshopper in front of you guys. I love icons in Grasshopper. I do not like um the, I don't like seeing components like this. I don't care what you guys use, okay? I don't like you can use one or the other. Um, but if you're someone who wasn't aware of icons, you can turn the the icons on going going up to display and then turning on draw icons. Now, it makes teaching difficult when using icons because you know I can throw in this dude and then. Th throw back to here and you're like what the hell's that right like you, you you need to know what the icon is to to kind of know what it is so i use this little plugin it's called bifocals um and what it does is it writes the writes the name of the component above the component as i like place them in um if i forget to put that in just let me know okay because i know that's quite useful the other thing that i do what was i going to say um, also, um, I, I sort of learnt Grasshopper by experimenting, similar to what Max was talking about. Um, I think experimenting in Grasshopper is a really good way of learning it. The, the thing is, I see a lot of people, um, they learn Grasshopper by learning, okay, I've got to use the curve component. And they double click and they type curve and they grab that component and they're done, right? And I believe that way of using Grasshopper is fine, it's efficient, but it's not one that encourages learning and exploring. Um, so if you aren't in a hurry, um, go explore through the ribbon. And I know I've got a lot of plugins. So the ribbon for most people should stop at around display around display if you don't have plugins installed so uh, parameters math set vector curve surface mesh intersections transforms and display they're all they're all showing you like they're all categorized into re relatively what you need to do so if you want to do something to a curve then j jump to the curve parameter if you've got a script that from someone you know, from me, for example, or from your colleagues, or you've downloaded off the internet, and there is a component that you, you like and you want to find similar components to that, if you hold Control alt and then click on that component, then Grasshopper will show you where that component came from in the ribbon. Control alt and then click and hold down on, the com on that component. Cool. And also, normally Grasshopper starts off looking more like this with it all compacted. Um, I don't know who the hell has a screen this tiny. I, I guess it's more designed for for people using you know, Grasshopper on, on a single laptop screen, like most of you might be. Um, but what I find is that usually hides like 90% of the icons sometimes. So if you go to view, you can set turn on obscure components. That'll sh try and show as many components as you, it, you can fit in the screen. Um, and you can also drag this out if you, you've like maxed it out. So, you know, there's a component like Ladybug, which is just absolutely full. If I drag that out, then I, I'm now seeing like all, all the symbols and I can go through and sort of be like, oh, what does this guy do? That's oh, the wind speed calculator. Cool. Oh. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll take that uh, as, a, as a call. Yeah, go on. With the obscure components i haven't seen that does that seem to add more than it originally shows you or does it just give you everything it can what it's doing side? so it's not adding components so see this see the grid section yeah. if i if i there's a little there's a little uh sorry expand Dot and that's thumb. then got all the that's got all the grid functions that are built into grass so it just opens every drop down menu yeah basically just says hey open all the drop down menus don't make okay. don't don't try and compact i don't even know why they would do it you know why they would want to compact it but whatever that's okay. so those I are just want to save the ui ui spaces so 
Pardon? They just want to save the UI yeah, yeah. spaces. They're stolen. But so those are those are a few things that I usually turn on or change um, when I first install Rhino and Grasshopper. I you know I go turn on the icons and I set the obscure components and and I, and then I'm kind of good to go. I know. Look, just just maybe some of you aren't aware of this, but sometimes when you've got a component that you're new new to and you've got B and P and you have no idea what that's meaning and you mouse over and it says base B wrap B wrap and and this one's called plane and that's the section plane. There's also this easy, easier way of approaching the script where you can turn on draw full names and that will turn, that'll maximize all the, the, um, the parameter names. I find that it makes my scripts really hard to read quickly um, and, and it makes them a bit more messier than, my, my scripts are really messy. So anything that makes it less messy is good for me. Um, but the one big reason why I don't use this use this is I'm a big fan of this component, the expression component, and variable. This component cares about the name of this variable input and this variable input, and the x. Like if I just write x plus y in this, just in the most simple way possible, um, it's going to break because it can't see x and it can't see x and y, and as well these variables that, that are being plugged in, they can't have spaces in them. So it breaks that component. It's a really annoying bug, which they should fix, but they haven't. Maybe most people aren't aware of it, but more so people, when they plug in these in expressions, they just convert this back to X and Y. And that, that will solve that problem. Okay? So, yeah, just those are really, um, to get me from Robbie forgot my card on my desk. Um, Rob or Steph. Sorry, I am teaching, mate. Um, and I'm not leaving because I'm on a roll. Okay. Um, so, back to writing some code. Does that, so that makes sense guys? Like that, I think that that's probably, you know, enough to get you guys sort of familiar the, with the way that I'm using Grasshopper. Cool. So I want to grab two curves and to just make this, I guess, you know, the script imitating geometry, we're going to set these curves to be, um, the bottom one is referring to the bottom flange and the top one is referring to the top flange. This is usually when I sort of explain how to get geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper. I don't need to explain it to anyone or do I? Is this, you know, you know, sometimes I, I'll get some random person in my class who's never used Grasshopper. Do I have anyone in the class who hasn't, who, who doesn't understand the set one or set multiple curves function? I don't like fully kind of know how to use Grasshopper. Okay, but you do you, do you know do you understand those sets? Do you want um, or do you want yeah. me to explain it a little bit? Yeah, if you could just explain it briefly, okay, that'd be great. Thank okay. you. Um, my, the best way I th I can think of Grasshopper, there's there's sort of like two metaphors that I use for it. One is that it is like a dream space, and the other is like it's like mixing a cake. Um, and we'll just use the, the dream space one here. Let's, let's, we're dreaming that we're mixing a cake, okay? Uh, and in that dream space, we, there's nothing, like if I draw a circle in, in that grasshopper dream space, ugh, let's turn off those, those full names. Um, if I draw a circle here and I make it, you know, 100 big, that circle there is, is that dude and it's not selectable in Grasshopper, I'm sorry, in Rhino. And as well, if I draw a circle in Rhino, there's nothing in Grasshopper referring back to that circle. You know, this, this circle here is this one, and this circle in, in Rhino, it has nothing to do with Grasshopper. Um, and Grasshopper tries to keep those separate, um, so that way you can control what matters to you in your Grasshopper script, 
versus what's in Rhino because you know I like I've got I've got Rhino files where where I've, there's lots and lots of things in there but maybe only like five curves in in that Rhino file actually matter in in Grasshopper. So what we do is we we have these these geometry parameters that you can drop in and sometimes if you have no idea what the geometry is that you're grabbing like for example you know it's a curve but it or it might be a surface but it could be a b rep etc etc you you can actually just grab the geometry parameter and that's a catch all that'll grab whatever you want as long as it's geometry it'll grab it out of rhino any of those you right click it and you can either set one geometry or set multiple and when you set one um, that'll give you the option to pick it and that you can see now that green circle green circle that i've drawn in rhino is now drawn in grasshopper and it's linked so if i move the geometry in rhino then the grasshopper geometry understands that that that's now that circle it, it'll follow that circle around the the way the if you have set multiple geometries on the way that you select your objects matters um, so you, you can say set multiple you then go through and pick the objects that you want and picking them in order matters so when we look at this list the first circle in that list and hang on i'll just very, do very quick demonstration do, do, do. Is this is this something you, you understand? Was it Gabriella? Yeah, yeah that's okay. making sense. But it's yeah. it's good. Is it it's good for everyone to just go re re, re over this? I guess I hope. Um, so if if I pick them in order, like when I pick them in order, they come in zero one two. Um, sometimes people they'll just mouse like they'll drag over things. You know, there might be like a hundred different things, um, and and I'm gonna do this in a way that ruins it a little bit sometimes when you do that dragging you don't have control of the order so just be mindful of that also um, sometimes you might have multiple objects selected prior to running that um, so if you have them selected prior and you go set multiple then those objects will be the ones that get selected Okay, so there's like a few different ways that you can bring those multiples in, and we'll deal with multiples in a little in a little bit, but we'll just we'll deal with singles for now. So I'll get rid of those circles. So we've brought two curves in, and the top one is going to be the top flange, and the bottom one will be the bottom flange, and we're now going to run through that pseudocode. So the, what was the process? We're we're going to um, actually can I do this? Display, is there a way that I can get that image? Here we go. Can I change the size of it? It doesn't look like it. Okay, so we've got our image of our, our truss. <laughs> um, and it's the first time I've used that one. Um, and we've got our two so what what did we do first do you guys remember we divided the yep. Line. yep yep cool and we're going to rely on um, the grasshopper divide component to do that that's going to do that's going to do everything we need it to do it's going to divide it evenly um it's we're going to be able to tell it the number of things now what was like if we we create a slider now sometimes uh like so if we create a slider and you know we set that to 10 this slider we and and set it to an integer um gabriella you're familiar with sliders hopefully yeah yeah um we set that to an integer there this number that we're seeing here we can either we can use this to describe the number of segments maybe the bottom flange will have so what did we do we we divided these double by a double amount to to get the more points that we need so that we can then dispatch and, and pattern them out so 
are you guys aware of writing expressions on inputs? Did you know that existed? Yeah. No. Cool. Okay. So, and every time we write an expression, the variable is X. So we can say for these, the, as long, whatever number is going into this input, it's variable will be times by two. So in this case, when we make six, we're going to end up with 12. And now we, now we have two easy lists that we can deal with. Um, and you know, if I go and grab that display component uh, that puts the numbers on it, that'll give us the indexes for those. Okay, so now we have to separate these lists out to be able to get those true false values, right? The, the true, false, true, false, true, false, true. This dispatch component allows us to set patterns and by default, its pattern is true, false. So if we plug our, our divide curves into that, into these dispatches and actually just hide, we'll just hide everything for now. Um, if I go grab a point component and just check what's coming out of A versus what's coming out of B, the, you can see there those those e odd, no, sorry, even numbers are coming out of A and the odd indexes are coming out of B and, and the so, so on and so forth for the top. So if we're making just a simple Warren trust, then we only really care about the, f with this default pattern, and I'll, I'll just extract that pattern as well and plug it into a, a panel so you guys can see it. Just organize this a little bit. So the pattern true false is repeating across the whole process. Um, and for the top f top flange, we care about the falses. That's giving us the odds. And for the bottom flange, we care about the trues. That's giving us the even. Um, and now we have two lists that we could, we could do really complex things and try and, you know, draw lines between them. You know, if we do do a line like this, this will give us kind of like half the, the, the webs, but the, the component polyline is actually a really useful one because as long as like, it basically just draws a polyline between points that are in order. Um, so if we can pull these point systems into a single list, then we can generate that, that web. So um, typically, so you guys have, you guys have been taught how to combine two lists together by like holding shift while she dragged them into a component. Have, have you guys seen that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that doing that is the same as doing a merge. It's just, um, you know, like a, a shortcut way of doing this. So these, this out, output here, if I draw, um, if I draw a polyline now between those two, that output is, is going to be the exact same as that that merge right so that you can merge two lists together and what that does is it's going to um, just basically stack them stack them on two ends and so do do just bring these displays back on so this zero one two three four five and zero one two three four up to six you know, stacking them together through a merge is going to result in that zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that line is basically representing that jump from five to six in that index list. So we don't want to touch merge here, but rather we want to use this patterning system that we've used for the dispatch. And we can do that with weave. So weave takes a pattern and these numbers here, zero and one, they are, you know, it's actually, it's actually quite a useful exercise here to help sort of t teach Booleans a little bit. I, do I need to talk to you guys about um, how Booleans can be converted from numbers to Booleans and from Booleans to numbers? Do you guys need to under, do you, do you understand that? So like a false, false in numbers could be what number? One. One. No, false is actually zero. Yeah. 
and then <laughs> so Andrew, could you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, I was, looks like the last time I was picking up. So, so what? Look, I'll just show you. So zero and one. If we plug that into an, uh, sorry, we need to make that a multi-line data. If we plug zero and one into an integer, and then we plug an integer into a boolean, and then we get a boolean and yes. convert that and actually look at it then zeros convert convert to false and ones convert to true that's the default um just be mindful that anything other than zero is true so if i typed 10 then 10 converts to true if i type negative 100 negative 100 converts to true okay so it's actually zero is false and everything else is true. Cool. Um, so in this case, if we plug these these true false patterns into the weave, then the the falses are going to end up wanting to run through the zeros, and the trues are going to end up running through the ones because of that conversion, right? So if we look here, this dispatch is outputting a, and which is a unfortunately this is the, the dispatch components the annoying one i wish it was putting a t and an f or a zero and a one out of here but a is referring to true and b is referring to false so a is the trues so our points coming out of this if we plug them into the one and our points coming out of b referring to false we plug them into zero this woven list now we get a single woven list like so, and that woven list, if I hide those points so we can see those numbers, you can see that's woven that now into 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. And so I should be able to plug that directly, those points directly into a polyline, and we should be able to get the web, uh, the web for that truss. Um, Andrew, do you mind just explaining that one more time? Yep. So, so what we've got, Grasshopper, the way Grasshopper works with branches and lists is that it wants, it kind of wants every, components either want to compare two lists to each other. So a component like um, the line component, it wants two lists. It wants a list of the start points and a list of the endpoints, and it draws a line from, from those two lists. So these component, there's components like this, and then there's components like this point list or polyline where what they do is they, they only look at the points within each list and then they do something to those, those points as, as a set of instructions. So what a polyline does is it draws, it draws a, you know, a straight line in order from point to point to point. So we've got, two, we've got two curves that we've divided up and we've pulled the points out that matter from them but the thing is, we need to bring those two lists together into a single list to utilize the polyline component. And this is probably the most, like this is the thing that actually matters with, with any form of like um, coding, like Python or C Sharp or, or Grasshopper or whatever. You, there, there's a billion infinite components that you could have at your disposal. You know, there's all these plugins, there's all these modules, there's all these frameworks, but to actually learn how to be good with Grasshopper or good with Python, um, it's learning how to structure your data in a way so that when you run it through those plugins or modules, that they actually work and produce the outcome that you want. Um, because because we, we'll be here forever if I if I have to teach you every component in Grasshopper, right? So so the the dispatch and weave components are the, the the thing like one of those building blocks of a grasshopper script that you'll see everywhere and pulling those two lists together in a, in that pattern and using the same pattern that we dispatched will create that polyline outcome one thing one thing i can suggest if you if you just grab a panel you can type in whatever pattern you want in in and plug it into that dispatch pattern boolean so i could say Rather than uh, true false, I could say false true. Make sure it's like a multi-line data if you're using a panel. If I plug that in, what's it doing?
It's the it's the opposite of so we're the yeah. one. So so what we what we're doing is we're defined like because what we've said here is with this top flange we're only going to get the falses the falses associated with B, and with the the bottom flange we're only going to get the trues. So if we say hey the pattern is true false, then the f you know we we're gonna if you run through true false true false true false, that means the trues are going to be coming um, the the if the first item is a true then we're going to be getting that from the bottom flange and so if i make uh if i make this true true false then we're going to see a, a line drawn from zero to to this halfway point and then from that halfway point up to there and then and then back again blah, blah, blah. So just have it like if you if you want to have a play the the one that matters for making a proper what like a good warren truss is true false in this configuration but you can play with whatever pattern systems you want there and see how that goes we're using that pattern to pull the points apart in each of those two lists and we're also using that pattern to weave them back together again uh, in a single list to create those webs max did that answer did that get get it across the line was it Max that asked? Someone asked me to re-explain it. Oh, it was me. Oh, sorry, yeah, that, that's brilliant. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for that. No worries. Can I ask Andrew though? Yeah, go on. The reason you have that Boolean pattern going into the dispatch pattern, isn't it just because it's it's true false by default, isn't it? Yeah, I could I could just yeah, plug this in. Default. I could plug but do you, that doesn't even need to be plugged in, does it? Its default is true false. The only reason I've plugged this the only reason I plugged this in is so that I could do this. Okay, all right. All right. Yes, yeah, so, sometimes you learn the defaults of components and you're just like, I'll oh, just grab a dispatch and and then not even need an input for it, right? Andrew, yes? what was the expression you used in the uh, divide curve? Pardon? What was the expression you used? Oh uh, yes, sorry. Thumbs two. Yeah. That's the expression I used. Okay, thanks. No worries. Cool. Right. At the same time, we've now got all the we've got all the ingredients to be able to produce the bottom flange and the top flange. Right? Do you remember what we did? Like just ignore we're gonna hide these lines, they don't exist, right? What was the top flange and the bottom flange going to be made from? All false connected. All false connected we from what? Them. From what? The top? The top. Okay, so I'll do that. So the falses are coming out of B. Bloop. And then what was the one for the bottom? All oh, truth. And that's well. Yep, cool. And look at that. We have drawn ourselves the center line of a truss, okay? This is the critical thing. If you guys, you guys are gonna start making grasshopper models of your bridges and cantilevers and, and improving them, the best way to approach it is by drawing center lines. Um, don't, don't draw, you know, a B rep that describes the, the balsa wood. You can do that at the end once you've drawn those center lines. Cool. Okay, so it's eleven o'clock. It's eleven o'clock. We've got two hours. That was the lecture for the tutorials. Tutorial. Um, what I want you to guys to do is I want you to try draw some of these other trusses. Um, for example, the the hoe and the the hoe truss and the prat truss. These are going to get a little bit trickier, right? Try and draw them using dispatch and weave. the 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 best thing to do at the moment, try just draw a prat truss without caring about the um or the hoe truss without caring about the um. The change in the middle so just just try and work out how to do 
like a like a left to right slope or a right to left slope um, and then another truss that you should have a go at trying to do is the Warren truss with verticals that's that's going to be it that that's just a little extra thing that you can add to this particular script right what we can do is we can try do you want to do you want to if should we try just have a go at doing the Warren truss with those verticals over the next five to ten minutes just have a think about how you might do it maybe I, I will do you think five to ten minutes is too long actually just no, let's, I, 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 think, I think that's good because people might not have been caught up yeah to yeah right now yeah like if you if I give you five to ten minutes what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this script up as well so if anyone's taken a bit of time and they're not up to this point you can catch up try and draw the verticals in and and then I'll show you one extra component that might be no maybe two components that might be useful for the the hole in the prat um, to do the proper ones um, and then we'll try and code that and you guys can just what we can send will into a room after that uh, when we start that exercise and I'll go into a room and you guys can you guys can come pester like check what your ideas are and then long term for this particular class is also thinking about how like actually starting to draw the cantilever and the bridge um, using grasshopper and hopefully what we've done in this particular session is I've, we've spoken about some of the things that you can do in being able to draw that. Cool. Do you want us to try to do this in like one dispatch with like one complicated weave or can it be multiple ones which, connected to which, which exercise? Like just for the next bridges with more, with like the one with the middle supports too. Um, you Look, you can try do it however you want, okay? Um, there, it should be, you should be able to write it in a way that it's done in a single script um, that doesn't that doesn't mean it needs to be done with a single dispatch and a single weave if you need to do separate dispatches and weaves then we can deal with them but I'll talk about two components that I think would be very useful to you or I might even mention three um, I'll talk about the various components that might be critical in making those Pratt and Ho components trusses um, yeah, so you, we'll get it um, but we'll do that after you've tried the verticals okay okay I'll, I'll see you guys in f we'll say f what do you want 5 or 10 minutes 10 yeah it's okay 10 okay, minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, go, go 10 Andrew talk to you in 10 and um, I'm going to go have a chat with someone and so if you've got any questions you can ping them off Will yeah I'll, I'll be here cool <laughs> Hey Will. Yeah. Sorry, I I think I just missed which bridge are we trying to do right now? So I think the first so first of all, if you haven't done what's on the screen, try and make this Warren Trust. Yep. That, that. Then 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 the next exercise is to do the Warren Trust but with vertical members in it as well. So vertical member as in in between every so, single triangle, there's a vertical one going down? Or just right in the middle? I, uh, okay. I, I think it, they're just in the, like, if you look at it as the equilateral triangles that are flat, like those ones, yep. like the first one and the last one, I try and just put vertical members in there. You can also try okay. and put vertical members in all of them. Um, and cool. then after that, you can try and do the Pratt and the Howe truss. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. Wait, so so we're only putting a vertical line through the first triangle and the last triangle? Uh, no. Oh, do, 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 uh, I, do, do verticals in all of them, actually. Verticals do, in do, all the triangles. Yep. So, okay, got it. Thanks. Yep, but I mean, like, there, there's no... Like, you're not submitting this work. This is just if you have a little play around. So if you, you can try and do that, you can try and get it. So it's just in the odd-numbered triangles, just the ones that are pointing up. Um, however you can get it to work. Hey, Will. Um, sorry, um, I've got a question. So um, 
um, with the uh, expression or uh, x times two, mm -hmm. um, is it necessary? Like, what's the point of having that? So, so uh, what, 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 the, what that's doing is that's doubling whatever goes into the the count for n. And yeah, right. So, so as in, what, what's the point of like why are we doubling it? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Oh, it's because it means that the count that we're using is actually kind of talking about the amount of um, like modules that we're working with. So see how our count is five and then it's because we're, we're using every second point in the line. Right. We, we, we want it to double and that, it, it, that also by doing a double ensures that we have an even number of points. Oh, because okay. it, because because if if like if you plugged in eleven, you're gonna have right, right, like, right. A, like you're 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 gonna end your truss on a upside down triangle, which is not yeah. what you, you'd you'd never want that as your outcome. So basically, one one even number. So that's we, that's we, why. You, yeah. Yep. So what one it ensures even numbers, and two it means that like the that slider at the start is actually sort of talking about how many of like it, it's like a, you ensuring you've got like a x amount of modules. Because you're using every second point anyway, right, 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 right. And, and, and in terms of in terms of why it's done inside that, you another option would just be to use the multiplication component. Right. Um, I, I I actually generally prefer to keep my stuff outside of the components, although it adds and makes things a bit more messy potentially. It means you can actually see what's going on a bit easier. Because right now, if yeah. Andrew hadn't drawn that big yellow box, you actually wouldn't know what's going on inside that. But that's just personal preference. You can do it either way. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Will, so I, I, I end up putting the verticals in every single triangles, but I don't know whether mm -hmm. the way I did it is like the legal way, so-called. What, what, what's the legal or illegal way? I, I don't know because I didn't use a weave. I just kind of took the point out and then just use a line tool. Just use a line function yeah. to draw a line straight down. Yeah, you. you that, that's correct. That's very legal. That's the oh, correct okay. way to do it. I think or the, the most efficient way. You shouldn't need to weave those. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Because yeah, Andrew was saying about weaving. So I was like, am I doing it the wrong way? Cool. Yeah. You'll you'll need to like probably muck around with some different weave combinations for those other uh, di trusses that have got various diagonal members in them. Yep. But when, when you've just got things that are like, that's kind of like the most simple pairing you can do in a list where like point one joins up with point one in the other list, point two joins up with point two. Um, uh, yeah, you don't, you don't need to weave for that. Okay, cool. Thank you.
Hey, Andrew. Where are we at? Um, me just having making a bit of a mess trying to work out the best way to do the shift list. Okay. Um, I can see you're already. Okay. One, one good strategy. I I can see what you're trying to do. How about? I, so so, I, so I, the issue I've come across is, I can't capture the middle point with a split list. I don't, I don't know the cleanest way to, to do it. Okay, so the, the problem with a split list is the division by two isn't always going to result in, like, if depending on how many segments you've got, it can end up with a bit of a mess. So in this, this is the perfect example. So in this particular how, I forgot what, it doesn't matter, but in this particular truss, we've got one extra segment than what that truss system would allow, right? Yeah, so you, so you could force it to have so how do a certain we number of segments. So, so it needs to actually have an uneven number of segments, right? This has currently got an even number of segments, is it? Yeah. Um, and we need it to be uneven. Yeah, even, even, even number of segments when you get an odd number of points initially. Oh, uh, because you, uh, you probably... Actually, I'd start this whole thing from scratch. You don't need to do the, the dispatch with these ones. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we, I was trying to go without a dispatch. Yeah. Um, go divide. Take um, this link. So one thing I would do, you know, just this is there's like a a million ways to skin a cat, um, but one thing I would do, I would generate all the all the um, the webs for the whole truss like as in i would do the slope the sloping yeah the full way full way along so you don't do the split list yep. just yet so we we do our shift list to get rid of the first point in this one yep. so we can yep. start getting and, our diagonal and then and then you create the lines yep and remember that we set wrap to false We've dropped off our first one, and it's out of the way. And on our bottom row, we want to drop off our last point. So we, we need a negative. Set wrap to false. And now when we draw our line. That's just gonna draw that all the way along. Perfect. Our and diagonal it, numbers. Now we can split that list. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's that's a much more logical way of doing it. Uh, look, the 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 attitude for this is it doesn't really matter so much with most examples. Like if I was drawing this truss for most examples, the producing like you know six extra lines is not going to be a problem. In if you're doing like a train line and you have to draw a truss at every one you know two meters, then then yes, you're like the the overproduction is probably going to kill your computer. But in this case, it's not. So we're we're not going to we don't need to worry about that too much here. By the way, if anyone's thinking about the the loss of efficiency of drawing four extra lines, it, it should be fine in most cases. Um, so we're still are we still going to get a problem in the middle or not? No, I think this will be good. Okay. So we, we want to keep the first four in this one and kill the the last four. So what's yep. what is the length of the list? So we need list length to work out what, what that is. And I think you've already got one there. Yeah, we've already, we've already got a list length. I'll just make a new one. Does anybody know how we're going to do this? I, I did this before. Well, let's just, let's just see what list length is. That's, yep. that's, so it's eight, okay. 
Oh, yep, yeah, we, we, we've been that. That's that tells you the amount of things in that list. And then Will's making a really easy question. What do you, what do we need to do to this this number? Okay. Right, divided by two. Yeah. That should give us four. That's the index we want to split out. Put our lines in. Well, my um, last two are connected to the first two, and I, I think I've copied your shift list identically. Okay, anymore. so the shift there's a there's a W value in the shift list, which oh, the is wrap. for wrapping. You need to set that to false. Okay. Um, has you guys kind of understand how lists could be can be thought of as like loops rather than like a straight line list? So if I said, what in this list, in this particular list, what is the index of the last line? Do you get like, Will, if you go grab the, the panel, a panel and, uh, ha and have a look at of the all, Of all our lines? Yeah, let's say that, that line. What's the, what is the index of the last line? The eighth one, connect, the, eight, the eighth point connecting to the zero point. The index would be seven. Right. You, you can see the last one's seven, right? I'm, yeah. I usually when I ask you guys questions, they're really, really simple questions because I, I, I'm trying to have a conversation, not, not a, a quiz. Yep. So good job, Tim. <laughs> um, seven. But, um, but if, if like, uh, uh, I'm going to draw on Will's screen. Cool. Okay. So if we, no, we can think of a list normally like in Grasshopper, you know, you think of a list as a line, you know, it's linear and it's got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, you know, the start is zero and the end is, is seven. But we can also think of lists as loops. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and normally, you know, I'll just use a clock, like if counterclockwise or clockwise, sorry, we've got zero, one, two, seven, six, five, four, three. Okay. So, so if I go, if I go right of, of zero, so from zero to one, what's that the equivalent of doing mathematically? Minus one? No, add, it's adding one. So zero to one oh. is, you know, adding one, right? Yeah. So if I, if I want to go backwards from, from two to one, it's the equivalent of minus one, as you mentioned, Tim. Yep. And I think you've, you've, you've jumped to conclusions, which is the right conclusion. <laughs> so if I, so if this is adding one and, and this is subtracting one, then if I go from zero backwards and subtract one, what would what what do I get? Ignore the number that I've written here. Zero minus one is negative one, right? So this seven index can also be thought of as negative one, and this six index can be thought of as negative two, and this five index can be thought of as negative three, and so on and so forth. So so what's happening with this shift list is when you've got wrap set to true, it basically shifts the, li the list one or negative one or two or whatever number you've done. And it, and it runs that, that, that list shifting as if the list was in a loop. Um, and so by setting it to false, what we've done is we've said basically just remove the start and the end of each of those lists, the start of this list and the end of this list. So you can see there that with this negative one, once that list has been shifted, that's getting rid. That's basically getting rid of that item, and the the index that used to be one is n is now zero. Yeah. So yeah. so what that also means is in the future, if you're trying to grab the last item in a list and you're using the, the list item component or a cull item component, you know, you're trying to do something to the last item, you don't actually need to check the length of the list. You can just say, remove negative one or pick out negative one. Cool? 
Yes. Excellent. Okay, off you go, Will. Should we make, it, should, should we make our diagonals to go the other way now? Uh, yeah, why not? Just while, while we're talking about shift lists? Yeah, so we're using... So, you know, if we're going to do this the other way, there's, there's actually a few ways of doing this, but let's just use the shift list method. So, what, you know, we're... Pr so, what do you think we need to anyone what do you think we, we need to do if to be able, like right now we've got this and this is a positive one shift and this is a negative one shift how do we produce this or we'll flip it so do negative then positive yeah yeah so basically the shift at the top needs to be the the opposite and vice versa for the shift at the bottom in here cool that looks good yep and down here we'll put in a positive one yep i'm gonna i'm That's gonna good. i'm gonna get nitpicky with your with your code soon will but we'll, we'll leave <laughs> it at the end cool guess what in, we've we've just produced um, a different type of truss. Um, I've forgotten what it's called. It is called what the hell? My browser keeps disappearing. We so have just double intersection wiring or something. Oh yeah, I can't like I just can't be bothered learning all the different truss names. They're just it's just painful. There's so many. <coughs> And then they, they change name if it's in a roof, like if it's a gable, it's different. Um, some, it's on, some of them it's called a long truss. Um, or a double intersection warren. Yeah. They're, these are quite, um, the, only, the only reason you would use a truss like this is if, do you remember how I, um, Remember how I put a, a square and I and I strung a string up on that square last last week, and like I could skew the the square with its pin joints by pushing it, but in one direction, but I couldn't skew it in the other. This this type of truss allows you to have like if this is a cable and this is a cable, then you have a very light tensile web structure that resists those forces um when they, when it's being skewed does that does that make sense so you know as it's getting pushed down only certain parts of this bridge are actually being utilized whilst if you push up then other parts will be utilized like just like a boat a bike spoke okay so will back to you okay so now that we've got our diagonal lines, now let's look at our split list. So remember, we have already done part here. So we've grabbed all our diagonals in this direction. So we should be able to do the same to well, you, our You could just, copy, you could just copy just the split. You don't have to check the list length, technically. Yeah. Yep. You would, if your code's right, then it should they should be the same length. Yep. Plug and in now our lines there. And now we're using the A out of the first split. So which what do we want to use for the second? A or B? B. Yep. <laughs> cool. And now if Will hides everything except for the the last items. There is our diagonals. We need to get some verticals in there. Anybody got an idea about how we should go about getting our verticals? That's Remembering good. that we don't want our verticals on the very endpoints. This one's a tricky one. I, I did it before, actually. Oh, did you? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. This is using a, I guess this is using a component that everyone should be aware of. Yep, it uses an extra one. Which, com which component would be good? Can you bring the points up for the top? Well, which it, have a, again, we'll make all our lines to start with. Yeah, well, we'll need that anyway. 
Oh yep. yeah, those are the verticals. Like our vertical lines. So what what's something that we can use to get rid of this line and this line? Oh, oh you can't you can't see my mouse. Sorry. Cold index. Yes. Cold. And and which indexes do we want to cull? The first and the last. And what would those indexes be? Zero and negative one. Yes. Perfect. Love it. Oh wait, I didn't catch it. <laughs> so the so this is index zero, let's say. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, oh, six, yeah. seven, eight. So so we could type zero and eight and we would get the same result. But remember, we can think of lists as loops. So we can call index zero and index negative one. And it doesn't matter how long the list is. That's right. Okay. We're gonna have it's kind of it's kind of like coding. Like um, when you go into the list, you this can. Is, this um, is coding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's coding. This yeah. Is. yeah. So, so it's, on, the same, it's the same. Not, it's, not the same as, it's the same as Python. Like um, yeah. when you want to reference to something in a list, you can. Um, do like negative one, negative two, or even like, oh yeah, they can do those and then like just do yep. normal positive numbers as well and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. And I think like the, the interesting thing with Python is I don't think I've ever seen anyone explaining indexes with it um, by like drawing a circle. Um, so the. Oh, they, 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 they assume everybody know it as well. Yeah, I know, but. I guess I guess what I, I'm getting at here is that there's we're actually in a really interesting environment where we have like an abstract visual aspect to everything that we're coding and you can like you can actually basically sit in that that spatial environment and think about how your coding's working. So that, that that's why I kind of like to use that loop as a as a diagram to, to show shift lists and cull cull index and stuff like that. And in in future lecture tutorial, we're going to talk about other ways of abstracting lists into different types of um, data structures as well. Um, so we've done the verticals, but what about the flanges? How how are we going to make our flange that goes on the bottom, which would be nice and easy? Anyone got an idea? Can you just connect all the points at the bottom? Yep. What would we use, Amanda? Polyline? Yep. And then cool. what needs to happen to the, the points on the top list for that to happen? You need to remove the first and the last. And we've already got a piece, like a snippet of code that we can use to do that. So we can just copy that. Get our point from up top. And then uh, Take I don't, out the first I don't think one. we need to force you guys to say polyline again. So. <laughs> cool. Now, Will. I have. Yes. You've cleaned this up, actually. I I missed you cleaning it up. Good job. So will yeah, at that, one point. I was I was a little bit lazy there. So will at one point he had he had a slider plugged into this one and he had a slider plugged into this one going through the negative, and then he had a panel which is I think this panel. He had a panel and another panel, and the problem is now like you've now got four variables that are effectively being that are duplicated. They're they're all they should all be linked. Don't do that. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. So what it means. So now what, what he's done is he's cleaned that all up and he's pull, pulled that all into a single panel. Um, and the reason we're using panels is, I I I pref I like when I when I'm coding. If I know like if I'm sculpting something with my script, then I'll probably use a slider. If I know you know this script is only ever really going to have that variable be one then I'll put it in a panel. You know, it's, it's almost like constants versus variables. Um, so what can we do, what can we do to this, um, to this script to make this produce a, um, a Pratt truss rather than a how truss? 
This is actually going to be really tricky. I like it's actually not going to work, is it, Will? If, um, you, if you can, you just put a negative one. Not in Not simply because if Will just puts a negative one, that's that's the you know in theory that should work. But if in you here? put yeah, that should flip everything, and it now produces I guess you know almost a Pratt trust. The the only thing is this guy shouldn't exist, and instead should be like this. So we could either copy this whole script down and make a completely new script that makes Pratt trusses, or we can try and build some logic into into our script. What like do you, what do you guys want to do? What what do you think's the better the better method? Should we try and build this all into a single script or make them separate? Wouldn't making it a separate script be better? Since um, they there are benefits. There are benefits to both. Mm, I see. Um, so let's so, do both. <laughs> huh? Well, the, let's, do both. let's let's do the more complicated thing. Let's build this thing so that it's um, actually this is perfect. This is a perfect thing to actually. We, the the reason we're going to build it into a single script is because it's going to allow me to explain the other function of dispatch and weave okay um and why not include um rather i'm gonna i'm gonna talk it through and will can demonstrate so that way we get as you know we actually make will work rather than sit sit around so i i kind of like this it's it's like i've got a voice operated grasshopper um and then i can draw on the screen Actually, I really like this setup. I haven't done this before. This is cool. Okay. This is an experimental class. Okay. So, um, Will, can you just grab a, a series, like maybe off to the yeah. side? And what we're going to do is we're, we're going to run some if-then st statements, basically, with it. So, so if you grab a panel that so we can see the numbers going from 0 to 9... Okay, so everyone here has learnt Python? No. no. More so, rather, let me rephrase. No, I have, just to double check, there, is there anyone that doesn't know Python? Or at least hasn't done the beginner classes with Python? Uh, I don't know Python. Okay, cool. Okay, so just really quickly, um, do Jacob, would you do you think you understand if then statements or if then and else statements? Yeah, yeah. So just I guess just to just to uh, reiterate, um, and if and if the and if then and else statement is a is kind of like a logical gate in scripting that um, we we use a like a quantifiable measurement so you know if you're over the age of 31 um in this room then put up put up your hand that's me i don't think anyone else is over that age and it's not like i can see anyone anyway so it doesn't matter um so what we've done is we've said measure age um and then match that age to a condition so if um if over the age of 31 then the condition is either going to be true or false so in my case it's true and for the rest of you it's false or with these two lines um you know let's say this is one unit whoops can i undo just erase let's try, let's try and explain it play it in like more coding style like if something happened, then do this. And for else means the other situation. Yes, yeah. So if if we, we quantify something, like if the unit of this line is longer than two, then do something. So, so this line is not longer than two, so don't do that thing. And let's say the thing is draw, draw an arrow in the end. So if longer than two, draw an arrow. And if not longer than true, then draw a circle. So else, draw a circle. Okay, all right, yeah. That makes right. a lot of sense. So grasshopper doesn't have a 
if then else component it just doesn't exist um what it has instead are these pattern writing components like dispatch and weave that we can put into that patterns and those patterns then distribute the 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 elements be they numbers or or geometry up to a and b and that that distribution that pattern distribution is actually just the same as what an if then else function would look like in python or c sharp or anything else so in this case we've got a panel that goes from zero to nine um, and we can write a logical operator to check against that so if will goes and grabs a larger than or, or gr sorry greater than or less than function you can he can pick whichever one he so and then if he grabs also a slider that ranges from zero to nine excellent then the let's just use the larger than rather than the equals to the larger than is going to output a list of booleans um, so they're going to either be false or true and so if the number is less than you know at the moment he's got it on four so zero one two three and four are going to have are going to come out as false in that that calculation and the rest come out as true so so what we're effectively doing is, is creating that measure like that analytical measurement and producing that boolean so that we can then distribute those things to be able to do do what we want now if will if you go grab the dispatch uh component so dispatch is dispatch is a really interesting component because it's designed to do patterns it actually has a really um it breaks the rules of grasshopper actually so the the p the p input normally in grasshopper the last item so if you've got two lists and one list is longer than the other the shorter list just repeats the last item over and over again so normally in every other component if i had a true false in there and we had a an opposing list that was 10 long then that pattern would normally go true false 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 so just repeat that last item and we'll get into that a little bit more in another tutorial i'm going to do a full like making sure everyone is is aware of how lists and branches work well and we'll cover that we'll cover this a little bit in that that lesson as well but dispatch it wraps so it it says true false and then it says hey let's just wrap over and loop over that thing so true false true false true false which is why it's usually like it is really a pattern distribution tool but if your pattern is the same length as the list that you have so you know if we have a list of numbers ranging from 0 to 9 and we have a list of booleans that are 10 long so they've ranged from 0 to 9 then it does it won't wrap and instead it's just going to send the numbers off to the a and b gate of dispatch based on that boolean test that we've done so so the a effectively becomes the then stream stream of an if statement and the b gate becomes the else stream of that if statement so if will plugs those in now this goes into our pattern then we yep. put our numbers into the list then what we get out of a is all the numbers less than four or less than Great, any sorry greater, greater than, four. than four and um what we get out of b is all the numbers um, less than and also including four because of the the boolean function that he's run cool oh this so so what go on this actually construct a what should i say construct a for loop and go to for loop and the for loop input the in input the situation. Uh, oh yeah, it goes through a boolean type and boolean type uh, boolean type uh, input a list of everything and you go through the entire list and abstract the everything that comes up with that list. Yeah, look, yeah. If you wanna if you wanna say, hey, let's try and convert this to Python. Just if you wanna try and approach this particular problem problem from Python, then Grasshopper 
almost all grasshopper functions are running for loops for the the list length. So so they're running a for so it's running a for loop, and it's it's actually running like a zipped for loop. So it's checking, or or at least within the for loop, it's checking this condition, the larger than condition. And You're then, like and then it's doing an if statement for that that can that boolean function. Like for uh, for for in, uh, for i in the series. Yes. And, uh, if the if, uh, if i is larger than uh threshold, then output uh, then output to uh, empty list and blue, uh, that empty list as a reference and. Uh, yeah, 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 you, yeah. Series and input that yes. There, there's a yeah. There, you can get really in depth into how this is relating back to Python. Like we can just assume this is just an amalgamation of an if statement in Python. If i is greater than four or a variable y or b, um, and then we've got we're, we're about to write something right. So so if so if if uh, y is if if the number is greater than four, will let's just do something to that number. Like let's times it by two. Times by two. And so we want that to happen to the numbers that are greater than four. Sure. Think, and and let's um times just to make it simple. Let's just times the numbers less than and in, including four by zero point five. So we half half anything that is small and double anything that is big. So so that A stream is this A stream is the the then, like the if then, and the B stream is the else. Oop, if I can spell else. Um, now the thing is what if we want to get this these two streams of numbers now back together again? Because we've got two lists but we used to, we used to have a list that went from zero to nine, and now we've got two lists. So how do we get them back together? Now this might it, you know this might be the one situation where doing a merge is appropriate because that we're the because of the way that the boolean function works and the way that the the sequence goes up, it could be merged together. But what's another way? What's a better way that we could do it that would deal with, for example, if Will used the equals uh, operator up here rather than the greater than so so we're going to have like a single item potentially or multiple items that aren't going to be at the beginning or the end but they're going to be sort of like dotted through the middle we've dispatched them apart and what do we need to do to bring them back together we yes we gotta we gotta append no no we want weave weave's the thing we want Appends not appends not the right thing or prepend append, all of those types of functions are going to be messy depending on, like you're going to have to pick the right one, depending on what your boolean function is, right? And especially like if your boolean function produces true, false, false, true, true, false, true, true, false, 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 true, false, false, true, then there's it's, an, it's going to be a nightmare working out prepend and append to that. So weave, weave just. Just remember, weave is going to associate your trues with ones and your falses with zeros. So the numbers that were coming out of B, they're going to plug into zero. And the numbers coming out of A, they just plug into one. And the last thing you need is you just need that Boolean check that you use to dispatch them. That's going to bring those two lists back together again so that they are matching that that output that we got at the beginning so that that is this is how a lot of logic exists in grasshopper is by using dispatch and weave it they're, they're really really powerful components the magic is usually getting your like actually doing this analysis of producing a true false value so there's so many components like if you check you can do curve, you know, points in curve checks. You can do numbers in domains. You can do lines intersecting and then checking whether or not they actually collide. There's so many things that can produce these, these sort of true-false lists 
that you can then plug into a dispatch and then run those those condition like the the functions based on what you what you've set for that condition does that make sense to everyone Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, what? Why are we? Why are we talking about this now? Because we're about to use it on the prep and how script. If we have a boolean toggle, which is just like a slider, but it's just a boolean button. You've probably seen it before. We can. Uh, I think it's more likely to be a switch. Sorry, say that again, Jack. I I think it's more likely to be a switch as well. A switch? Yeah, like you put it, like put the toggle, toggle true, that means, okay, so the system is on and putting false, okay, system is off. Yep, yep. So we're going to, we're going to basically say, we're going to have this little switch that we switch between true and false. And that's either going to produce a Pratt truss or a how truss, right? So we'll say false is going to be our default. And that's going to produce the how trust. So that's the one that we've already made. No, you've got it. You've used the yeah. Okay, all good. Um, so let's go back to the the trust script. Yep. Let me just move this out of the way. Okay. Actually, this is per I, I love. I actually really like this example. I'm, I might make sure that I use this in in the future. So, when we have the how, um, ra rather, actually, let's change it. Let's make false Pratt. And so the default. What's oh. So the reason, okay, the reason I'm doing this is if you, can we toggle that to true? So when we have this set to true, we want the, we want this um, trust to be like what it was before. So Will, can you go change the, the negative back to, back to a regular one? Yep. So, so what we want to do when we, when we click on, when we double click on that toggle true, it's going to flip and it's going to, it's going to try and make that one a negative one. And there's a few ways we can do that. One way is by using a weave. Actually, let's let's use a weave. So, so if Will grabs a weave, now now what we're doing is we're actually using we we're using weaves rather than as a logic gate. We're actually using the the boolean function to to pick. So you can say, okay, there's one, and there's negative one, and one would plug into one. And the negative one would plug into zero. And so now instead of using that that one in the in the base script, if we plug our weave into that into this dispatch, I'm sorry, not dispatch, that panel. Yeah, into this panel. Now when, when we flick that switch, it's gonna swap that negative that's one's gonna become a negative one and it's gonna flip between the, the two rule systems, right? So that's step one. Now, step two, we can do exactly the same thing. We can have two sets of rules. What, what do we, what do we need to do? So, if we go now, if we go to false, false. What's something? What do we need to do? We just need to get rid of this guy, right? So, so what, what can we do to these lists that gets rid of those two? So can, can we go find those two those those lists that are yep. actually making those members? Put our lines here. So we need to get rid of one. How, of do, how do we take out? How do we take out an item? It's something we've already done. Yep. Anyone there? It's literally staring us in the face. Kind of. Oh, index? Yeah. So we only want to cull so right now we're writing a script that can be in we can we're writing a script that can be in two states, right? It could either be removing something or removing nothing. 
because if if we set it to remove that yeah you know that's perfect will yep if you make it remove zero and can we do the cull index on the other side as well mm -hmm. so the other side's obviously going to be minus one because it's on the other end of the truss so lines yep so if we leave it as zero it takes up the first one which is not what we want So, so right now, if I now, like if we, yep, do that, if we go turn this now back to the how truss, that, that part of the script is still going to run and we're going to lose those members that we need, right? So, so we've, what we've got to do is we've got to write a logic gate so that if this is a how, if this is a Pratt truss, then remove those ends. So, and I, I'm, now we're getting a little bit complicated, that this toggle, this is, that is producing the measurement that we care about that tells us what needs to be, what needs to happen. So if, if true, um, then don't do anything. I mean, if it's, but if it's not true else, then remove those end pieces. So, you know, if, if we just go get the basic building blocks of an if-then statement, so a dispatch and a weave. Can we get to the end of the script? Yeah, yep. So if we just grab a dispatch and a weave. If, if this is true, we don't want this to run, right? So the true, the tr the true being that, that it's a how truss double checking yeah so so where is the where is the value that defines that this is a how truss it's that toggle right so if we if we go grab that toggle and just plug it into a into a boolean parameter just to yeah, so keep we, so we bring it bring it over keep this organized yep so that boolean actually i'm going to use a little arrow that might be easier this little boolean here this boolean here is actually orange is probably a bad color in grasshopper as well, isn't it? Um, this boolean here is the thing that's determining what type of truss we're making out of those two. So that would be the thing that goes into the pattern. What that's going to do is it's going to send all of the lines either to A or B. So in this case, it's going to send them all to actually, um, Will, can you make, this is actually the, the cull index is actually going to be inside the statement so it's actually that line plugging into the dispatch oh. so we're sending all of these lines either up to a or b now when it's false we want them they're coming out of b and we want to remove that one so b plugs into the cull index and the the result of that plugs into zero and when it's a we're doing nothing we don't we just say hey when it's true just don't do anything and that plugs into there and we just need this boolean to plug into the disp uh, the weave to bring it all back together and the output of that weave will then give us the the correct outcome w w when it comes to removing items okay and we can we can repeat this whole thing for for the other side it just the only difference is that click our button. Yeah. Uh, you've got you've got a component mm. displaying that line, by the way, somewhere. Yeah, I, we're, Andrew. We're, yeah. It's we're, just hide all most of that stuff. Yep. Yeah. Uh, go yeah, on. Gotcha. The if you go back to the start, the boolean, the weave that's going into the negative, is that negative going into both of the lists? No. And, Look, can you grab a, can you grab a, um, Will, just grab the, a, just show that, see this panel down here? Yes. Yeah, can I just see where that's going into? So when, oh, where it's going to, it's going to everything, man. It's going okay. into all these shifts, but some of the shifts, it's being, it's being times by negative one. So. Yeah, okay. So it's going to everything as, where does the negative one? The negative one is getting plugged into, so. We're generating these, these lines here are being generated by this component and this component. So which, like if you look, those two components are connected. This one's connected to the top flange and this component's connected to the bottom. 
but this component here is getting a negative to the shift, while this one isn't getting a negative. And that's, that's producing those left to right slopes. And then we're just doing the opposite. So we're, we've copied that whole section and then this guy isn't getting a negative, see? Whilst this one, or is it? Oh yeah, no, that's right. This one's get this one isn't getting a negative, while this one is, and that now now it's messy again. But do 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 you get what we're doing there? It's yeah, just yeah, thanks. You, I was just unsure into which we went all of them. I thought I was just going to the negative all ones. Good. All good. Oh good. Yeah. So we've done. We've written like if you just flip that true false on again, will. So it got rid of that line, right? And if you turn it back on again. Unfortunately, we've only done the that if then statement for this end. We we have to do it for that one as well. So can we do that? Will so which we could probably just copy this whole thing. Yeah, we can delete that. Oh, but this one needs to be negative one. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, now we could write this script a little bit more efficiently, but we're, we're just tacking this, all these rules on the end. That's fine. It doesn't matter too much. So if we set the rules back to, to false, we're now missing one member or two members, sorry. We need a member that does this and this. Yeah. So where can we get them? They, they do exist in our system because we remember we overproduced all of these. This, this one's index zero from this list and this one is index negative one from this list. We're gonna find those lines. So let's, let's go find those lists and then pick out zero and one and then we can actually just chuck them into a single dispatch which will do the true, true false thing based on the how, and we just grab them out of the B, and we're done. And it sounds simple, but we've, we've got to code it. <laughs> so we've we've got to pick the the last one from that list. Yep. Just get our list item. It is. Is this is this making sense to everyone? Is this is this more so? Let me rephrase. Is this really confusing to someone? Is this just like, what the hell's going on? Have I lost half the class? Excellent. Well, basically, I understand what you're doing, but if I'm doing it on my own, I can't. I can't. Like... Yep, and that we've got to we've got to give you like you've got to start working out how to do this on your own. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And the, the only way to do that is to to actually force you guys to try and draw stuff that you've made by hand, right? Like, like all of you have made something out of pasta or balsa that is probably going to be a bit difficult to model in Grasshopper, which is great. You've now got a you've now got like a an exercise that you can go and do where you're forced to learn something new in Grasshopper, in a way. And you've actually you've got an outcome that you have to match. Okay, so how are we going to get these lines to be included based on what our boolean is? So we only want to see them it, it, when when the boolean set to false, right? So I connect the boolean to the wrap. Sorry, can you repeat that, Noah? Connect the, the boolean from the beginning to the wrap. What's what's the last word you said? The, the wrap is in the... Uh, that is only going that is only going to work for the negative one it's it's like as in what what you'd be doing is you'd be breaking that list item like list item wouldn't work if the wrap set to false with a negative one it, it would just say there's no such thing as negative one 
Um, so it will it would work if it was inverted, that Boolean was inverted and plugged into that wrap. But, but it's not going to work for this. Um, this one's, you know, this, this we... it's not going to break that wrap. Go on, Amanda. Can we put them in the line component of the call index? So, put yeah. Put line container? Like, so for that one... Oh, you, you, you want to put them, you want to put, you want to add them into this one? Yeah. That's, that would work. Um, Will, it's probably better to put them, can you, you should put one into that one and one into the other one. Yeah, that, just one sides, that, yeah. that would work. Could you just merge them, put them in their own other dispatch and just put list yep. B as the That's another line. way of doing it. So there's there's actually yep. the, Amanda was correct and so so is Max. They're both correct ways of doing it. Amanda's way is actually good because what it what it means is you you're actually keeping like if Will selects this this list, it's actually keeping those lines sort of grouped together. Um, there you do get this a bit of a mess here with branches, and we'll, we'll deal with branches another day. And in this case, it's not going to be a problem. But if, if we were trying to write, you know, a, a, a script associated with this that, um, you know, we wanted to make the size of the members efficient with Karumba and all of those types of things, um, then actually Amanda's way is probably better. Max's way is better as well. They're both really good. Because Max I think it is, just depends on what you want to do afterwards. Yeah, yeah. The Max Max's way is also really good because if you want to keep these separate and they're gonna be a different size. So this this <laughs> they're both really good answers. <laughs> good job. So so Will, if you go back and um Amanda, are you sure you wanna drop out of this course? Yeah. You're doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so if Will flips between them now, oh, what have we got? Oh, uh, I might have something previewed on that's not supposed to be on. Uh, it'll be th it'll be these guys. Yeah. Oops. Turn everything off. Have... Mm. Have we done the the middle lines that's yet it. with the boolean. Uh, but we're the missing middle, the what lines middle lines. As in the uh, the vertical lines. We've done we those. Done... We've done the vertical lines. They're really, they're really simple to do. Oh, did, they don't matter with the boolean. They're the same either way. Yep, yep, they're oh, the yeah, same. Okay. Look, if oh, Will, if Will flips between them, they see they stay the same. So Will's, we've now made this script. So if Will plays with that multiplication thing, we're going to see it break if he steps it up once. Oh no, mm. we're doubling it. Perfect. No, Never no, mind. Don't think so. There you go. Look, we've got this really nice script that makes these trusses, and we can flip between them with that that. Trust. And also, you can just change it. Bam. Oh, so so what are we doing? Is we we were keeping the um, the first and the last line, like the slanted lines, st like like not changing, not within the boot, but we're keeping the 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 slanted lines in between. Yeah. Uh, we've can just set the set it back to false. Within. Mm -hmm. um, there was a line that did this, based on based on the script that we wrote, and what and we we're did, also keeping the vertical lines. The vertical right, lines, the vertical lines are always the same. You know, the oh, yeah. the rule set for both is the same. Right. So so we're basically saying get rid of that line, get rid of that line, and go grab this and this. But that is all based on an, an if then statement written in Grasshopper. So it's and it's using this tr this value to be the the boolean trigger that sets it either to to an if or an else. Cool, 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 cool. And that is a really nice script that we've just written. Um, you can use that, like, will if you just go grab, you know. Can you draw an arc here instead of a line? An arc over the top? Yeah, it, does, it doesn't matter too much, you know. Like, as in this input. Can you make the, see this curve? 
Oh, just... sorry, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, the actual Rhino curve, you don't want to draw. Yeah. Um... It could be anything. Arc. This one has arcs in it. I haven't used Rhino in a while. <laughs> that one, yep. Start point, start point, end point. And then if we just chuck that one in instead. Like the, the script deals the script deals with that fine, you know? That's you've actually probably done um, with this this versus also that Warren Trust and the verticals between in that Warren Trust, we've done like ninety percent of all all trust work that you might have to do in um in your career. Which is good. Any questions? Oh, just a little question. So, with the arc, right? We can see there's a like like an extra bit. Sorry. Right. Like the, there's with the arc, there's there's these extra. The ex the, there's extra on the ends. Just hide yeah, the, yeah, just yeah. Hide, that arc is a control geometry. So if if Will just hides it in Rhino, Grasshopper still sees it. But yeah, that's that's now the truss. Oh, okay, okay. Look, you do you do get trusses that look exactly like this. Oh, because because in Grasshopper we're selecting the, the the points, but with in in, in Rhino. Yeah, look, okay. look, I look most trusses that I've I've ever worked on, they end up doing this because there there's some kind of column that's picking up these two things, and they they want to support it there and there. There and there, it's it's these these diagrammatic. Um, do you, can you go back to one of those diagrammatic trusses, Will, if you've got them up or not? The, it's these diagrammatic trusses. These these are actually kind of talking about bridges. You know, that so normally a bridge you you only need to really support it at those two points and and you've solved the problem. But when when you're doing a truss for a roof, you you kind of do need these to extend and I think you guys are perfectly capable of working out how to do that now by just having another boolean in that script that that turns on and off whether or not there is there's an end or not in that script at the top on the top flange it's using all the tools that we just used today we you have enough to be able to to, to turn that off and on Cool. Um, does anyone have any questions about the assignment that is due the end of next uh, week? Andrew, we had a question while you're gone. If yep. there's any exemplars or example reports for people to look at. Uh, yours was pretty good. Yeah, that's mine. Do you still do you still have yours? I can, I can look. I'll try and find okay. it. Okay. Look, but the, this is the thing. Um, if Will will send his. The thing is, Will's. Will's is going to have a little bit more content in it than what you what you would have because Will got like five lectures worth of engineer stuff. So if, if there's stuff in there that you feel like you don't understand, like I know, like I can actually remember Will's. We had a bit of an argument about yours, didn't we? Yeah, yeah I remember. Um, and I think another another big thing about mine also is that there's a lot of it's got a lot of text in it, which I don't think is necessarily. You don't, yeah, yeah. You can ignore Will's. In. You can ignore Will's text, but all, he did a really. He's done all the diagrams that I think are good. Actually, I can't think of. Think can't think I've ever gotten one where I've, where I've just been like, you know what, this is the perfect amount of content. But Will Will's Will's is good, but it's probably too much text. Is the idea we we use the photos we took of our models and like where it broke, and we just diagram around it to explain why it broke and... yep did you did you take a photo before it broke yes then yeah. you, i would i think you should use that to do your diagrams and then the the where it's broken it hopefully you, you can kind of make out you know what what is actually failed and you can see where it's failed and and making making that sort of critical analysis of why that's happened and like we've spoken a little bit about um was it was it you Max that did the like the the spaghetti bridge that just basically fell over just by touching it? Was it someone else? It fell over with touch, but with weight on it. 
It's right. very lopsided. Yeah, but we was I think it was that was Declan. Oh uh, yeah, so like I oh, know that wasn't me, no. Okay, so um it was Declan. So it's we we you don't have to worry too much about how you need to improve it for this assignment. It's that's something that we can talk about in the next one. Um but next this this week and next week we are starting the second assignment, okay? Um, as in, you know, a lot this stuff that we've just done here is basically the kickoff for you needing to start scripting your bridges in Grasshopper. So um, I understand that it's annoying having that overlap, but but we've got to I've got to just teach you guys what what you need to know to um, as we as we go. I don't want to waste time. So um, I will also have a look through my archives of uh, of student assignments, and I'll find something that's good. I think Penny did a good one at one point. Yeah, I can, I can much, send mine like, on Andrew if you want. Yeah. How much engineering talk do we need to give? Is it just a very rough analysis, or do we need to get quite detailed of what we think happened? The thing, no, no, no yeah, you don't. You don't have to go too deep. You can say like, look, it broke here, and I had. I had rigid joints there and so it bent and it snapped you know very very simple um we're talking like i i think you guys can probably communicate better through diagrams and drawings than through writing analysis okay so showing okay this is where the load is and these are the types of supports and that member there was in bending through a diagram is way easier than writing it as a paragraph. And it's it's much easier for me to, to look what you've done. The critical thing is keep your symbols and your colors consistent throughout your report. Like if you're gonna pick red for tension and blue for compression, tell me somewhere in a legend. If you're gonna use triangles for pin joints or circles for pin joints or whatever, make sure there's a legend there that I can understand it or anyone else can understand it. Like there's, there's always going to be some kind of like translation between symbols and iconography and what they actually mean. Um, and if you feel like you can't show your critical analysis through a diagram, then there's nothing wrong with writing it, writing it down. That's fine. I'm not limiting you to that. I'm just trying to give you the hint that it's going to take, like I could probably finish this assignment as a first year um, in about an hour if I was just doing diagrams. But if I had to write everything up, it'd take me all week. You, do, you know what I'm, do you know what I'm getting at there? Also, when I, when I send on my assignment to people, don't get confused because there's some other, we did some other exercises. Mine doesn't have a bridge, but it's got some other yep. models we made. So just substitute for yours. But it's, it's, the, same, it's the same approach. Yep. yep. And are we using Slack for our? Yeah, just talking in Slack. Yeah. Um, also, what do you mean with the two pages of appendices? Appendices. Is that? Um. So. What I was hoping for you guys to do, and I, I think I mentioned this in in the first lecture, is that you guys need to be taking notes from the lectures. I just want you to grab all your notes and throw them throw them in as an appendix. Okay. Um, and then if you've done a really good job, I'm going to steal it and, and send it out to everyone. Andrew, do you want me to keep the appendix attached to my report? Yes, but actually I'm, I will distribute uh, Will's appendix after the assignment because it's, um, it's probably good. I can't remember if it was good, but it, it's a good note like it's good for notes for the rest of the, the term, basically. So for example, um, like a, a few things that I would throw in my appendix is um, like the formula for Young's modulus, which I mentioned last week, um, or um, like the conversion rate from kilograms to Newtons. Um, you know the, all those sort of little exercises that we did in those lectures. They're all they're all little notes that will be useful. And the thing is, 
what I'm what I'm hoping for with that appendix is that one day in th- four years time, let's say, um, you just can't remember, like someone you you haven't touched a steel section ever in your whole career, and someone said to you, "Oh, we need a PFC or an unequal angle," and it's like, "Oh, actually, I remember that. You know, I've got that appendix. You go pull it out, and there there it is. There's those little notes that you've taken from the lecture." Mind you, you should all be good enough to use Google to do that. So whatever, right? Yeah, I, I, th- I think I found that probably the most valuable thing is knowing your beam types. Oh yeah, you think so? I know. I, I feel like over the past couple of years, that just comes up so often, and you're like, oh, what's these what are these acronyms pe- people are talking about? And I just they expect you to know them when they say them. Yeah, people are so like we're so lazy when we communicate. We we're like, oh, we'll just how about we just use a you know a a three hundred CHS through here and we'll join that to like an R uh, a UB and we'll use a maybe a cleat through there like all that terminology people just they talk it if they they treat it as if it's their natural language um, if I ever use a term that you guys don't know just let me know and we'll and we'll I'll explain it and as well you know one day when you have a job and someone says oh We've got IFC or AFC coming up, so can you do can you do the DA drawings? I need you to make sure that you you don't get embarrassed. And you say sorry, this is the first time I've heard that ever. Can you can you tell me what AFC means? Because people will tell you, and then then you'll know you're in the loop. Oh, what? So what, what, what what exactly is that? Um, like IFC stands for issue for construction. And DA stands for development approval. Like they're all types of stages and approvals that you have in a project. I'm, I'm just using those as an example. Confusingly, IFC is also a file type. Yeah, IFC is, yeah. Hopefully that file type disappears forever and we don't have to worry about that. But yes, it, would, it was very annoying that someone designed the industry foundation class file. It's so annoying. They should have called it something else. Can I ask one more thing just about the assignment? Mm-hmm. How much do we mark for, from the appendix versus the other parts? Is it like 50-50 or is it? Oh, it's like five. The appendix is like 5%. It's just, okay, you so know, it's a, percent, it's... it's a percentile number that forces you to try and do it. Okay. <laughs> but it doesn't. It's all good. Incentive to do it. It's not essential to do it, but, you know, it might bump, it might bump you up. Look, also, if you've done an exceptional job, and you don't have an appendix, then I, I might ignore it, you know? It depends. Do, do, do you know where I'm coming from there? Like, yeah. I've, I've fa- like I almost failed one class because I didn't submit a journal. And it was like, I don't, is, um, is any, are there any like, yeah, the design stu- the guys that have done a design degree were you guys forced to do like journals at one point do you know do you know what i mean like you'll have like yeah, a design, design stu- journal yeah you have a design studio and they want you to like collect all the information that like all the stuff that you've been doing over the term and, and collate it into a journal yep, yep. just to for- like it basically forces you- they want they want to know if you've been if all the blood sweat and tears that looks like your final assignment has in it is actually true blood, sweat, and tears, and so they use the journal to be like, "Ah, oh, I see. Yes, they've they've done five thousand drawings. Excellent. They deserve that HD." Um, because they barely look through those journals. We used to do like a logbook for the Python course, and you could enter literally anything into it, and you get the percentage for it. Really? Yeah, that's. Did you know? Um. Ben Ben marks that class using a robot like he, he has a yeah, python he, script that marks the class he showed us the script he does to mark it he doesn't even mark it himself he kind of i think he spent a while writing the, the marking yeah. script and just submits it and that's it yeah yeah it's a bit i think it's a bit lazy because you know you can you can technically s- solve python problems different ways but i think he, he just expects you guys to do it the basic way but yeah that what well, as long as you type a into the log file he's like yes you get five percent yep <laughs> Interesting. Uh, the, the actual one is actually idiot. The marker never broke. Like it, 
you could do the you could solve it anyway as long as the output is what he wants does it does it tell you what your mark is as you do the work yeah you can submit it as many yeah you can submit as many times as you want yeah so i yeah I've been... and it was like the first week of what you could we had the whole term to do all of it yes yep so i i have written something similar for grasshopper um which i wasn't going to are we gonna, are we gonna use this term do you well uh, that's i guess what, what i'm gonna ask you guys if i've got a grasshopper test um it ranges from easy to very very hard um it I can give it to you guys, but it won't mean anything for your mark at all. You can just do it. Just, just it's actually really good to learn. What it does is it gives you, it gives you the answer. As in, it it shows you the outcome of what the script needs to do. It gives you the inputs and it gives you some hints if if you need them. And then you have to write the code that produces that outcome, and then it tells you if you're correct. Like it, it, it actually says like, no, you're wrong by like, there's too many lines or there's not enough, like they're not accurate enough. And it, and, or it just flat out says like, that's wrong. I can't fault Ben for the marker because if he had like 50 people to mark and the scripts got longer and longer each week, he would have to read through every single script. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying it's a little bit lazy because the only the only problem is it's hard to give people feedback on how to get better if you're just marking it using using a robot. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what uh, I mean. Oh, that, that, that's how most most people teach Python. I know, I know, I know. And and it's like I don't have that luxury with Grasshopper because like I'm gonna have to look through all your bridge scripts, for example, eventually, and be like. And mark them based on what what I can see, and it's yeah. There's a there's a luxury with that Python. <laughs> Ooh, try try yeah. I, I don't know. Have you ever touched anything like uh, image recognition or anything like that? Have I tried to do image recognition? Recognition. Yeah. Um, you can ask Tim if I if I'm trying to do image recognition. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yes, yes, I am trying to. T I I have tried to do image recognition. Why? Oh, the OpenCV does have a, a library to to let you like. I'm aware. Uh, you, you, you I'm aware of that. Stuff. I'm aware of it. Why? Yeah, like if you if you are thinking about doing a full full auto marking system, you can use that library. Uh yeah, the the that can of worms that you just brought up, Jack is humongous absolutely humongous i i don't i my i i probably the computers will be computers will be running the world at by the stage that i would be able to write a script that that could do that you know it's so hard to mark like because i'm marking you guys on, on more than just whether or not your scripts are good i'm actually marking like this is computational design this is not computer science so there is a design aspect to this and it's very hard to quantify design, design within an design. AI system. The thing is we're slowly edging closer and closer to that and it's going to be us that ends up doing that. You know, it'll be computational designers that end up feeding, creating this, these AIs that, that make better designs than humans one day. Um, but it's not happening today and it's not going to happen uh, like it's not just it's not going to just be me that does it it's going to have to be a lot of people all working together so uh, like I guess the, the, the image recognition stuff that um, you mentioned it, I'm actually doing research with Tim this term on doing that at, at a like a blurry level of a design phase like at literally the um like in the first day of the design and we're looking at voxels. Martin, where can we get all the details for the assignment? What do you mean by details? Like maybe the, like the things that we need to submit maybe? Like the know. course outline? Maybe. The course outline has it most, everything in the course outline is, is correct except for the date of submission. I so will... 
Sunday. I, this Sunday. I think he means the content. Maybe he means the contents. Like, I guess like the, the they say like the contents, like the stuff in it is submitted the, in the sign. Marking maybe. criteria. Uh, yeah, the, maybe. The marking the criteria, criteria. The marking criteria is there in is the, the, it's in the course outline. Yeah. Um, the critical the critical thing is if you if you watch last week's tutorial, there is a point where I I just take some an image and I go through and do the analysis. Do that. If you do that, and and be critical about what decisions you've made, then then you then we, it'll work out well. I have like I know one of my biggest weaknesses with as a course coordinator is I make vague assignments, and it's because I need you guys to think critically. Okay, I I, I don't want to spoon feed you. Like I actually don't like the idea of giving you Will's report, but at the same time it's fine I, I will the re the reason is that you guys need to develop the ability to decide on what is important to put in your assignments because one day people aren't going to tell you what to put in your in your designs or in your outcome like you're gonna to have to win projects so you're gonna to have to win getting a job somewhere and turning up to the interview they're not gonna say okay give me four floor plans a section and make sure that the the joints are support like supported you guys have got to develop that that ability and i i i understand that i'm giving you that vagueness and i want to see that that decision making coming through and, and developing and so obviously i'm not going to be saying well you haven't ticked these 10 boxes so therefore you've failed i'm 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 fairly good at seeing that thought pro I want to see that thought process more than seeing the, the box ticked cool well uh double check the the the, the assignment due on this Friday right um we said week we said end of week four right week four is week is this week yeah, three yes yeah, so you said week four yep but yeah yep I I don't want to talk is about this it. week three or week four this is week three mate Oh, okay. Yeah. So, next, look, next week. I don't want to talk. We, I don't really want to talk about the assignment unless someone's got an emergency. Rather, if you if you want to talk to me about the assignment in any way, like if you want to throw me a draft and just say, "Am I going in the right direction?" Just send it to me on Slack, okay? And I'll I'll get to it eventually. I'll, I'll make sure you've got some time to actually deal with the the reports. Like if 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 anyone is worried about it. But I, I just want you to relax a little bit. I'm I'm not going to. I'm I'm not that that teacher with the whip make, making you do tons of work. I want to see what's happening in your brain, and that's what these assignments are for. The assignments are to get an understanding of whether or not you understand what's going on, not not to prove that you can do lots of work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where are we submitting it? You are submitting it to Moodle. I will set that thing up between now and when it's due it's Did not like us one more question yep if the bridge project's coming up are we doing strictly grass up or can we do some aspects around it like the drawing out the lines and yeah look if like you use the tools that you think are appropriate so you know if you're drawing the table that you've put the the um the bridge on for example don't, you, you can draw that in Rhino. That's fine. Okay. We've just had some courses where they want everything in Grasshopper. That's annoying. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, well. that's Look, that's good because it does force you to learn. But now now what I want, I want you guys to kind of evolve into a, the next level. And, and so, like, I've, you know, it's we've got this tool that's really versatile. Like, it's really, really versatile. But it's kind of like like I'm, I'm giving you a laser cutter and I'm just saying use this to do everything. Or here's a 3D printer, use this to do everything. And you've got like a nail that you need to hammer in. And I'm like, no, no, you've got to use a 3D printer to, to hammer that nail in. And it's like, no, it's, so, it's just so simple. You just go grab a hammer and just nail it in, right? Well, we've got this grasshopper tool. We don't, like it, sometimes there are some things that you, that you do that are so simple 
that you don't need to use grasshopper. Does that does that answer, does that help relax people a little bit? Yep. Cool. Okay. That being said, if it's so simple but it needs to be repeated or it needs to change, then use grasshopper because you're going to save yourself a lot of time. Yeah. Um, I've got to go. Uh, before I do, I just want to check with two people. I know it seems like I'm going to be singling these people out. Um, Tim, can we talk later today or tomorrow? Is that okay? Yes, that is completely fine with me. Um, later today, as in, do you have a time in well, your? Well, actually, is tomorrow tomorrow morning better? Yep, tomorrow morning is fine. Yeah. Okay, let's talk tomorrow morning. We'll work out a time later. Cool. N Nicole, are you still around? <laughs> just not just not talking nicole you're no, I can talk. <laughs> okay cool nicole you're you're doing your research project with tristan morgan out of perth right yeah um has tristan told you that he has resigned from cox yet no no this is the first time i've heard that okay look um okay well he has resigned but and he's going to be moving somewhere else what I want you to understand is I think you should stick with Tristan and do your research with Tristan no matter what, what happens, okay? Oh, what about the case study? Uh, look, if you, that become an issue? If, you need, if you need Cox case studies, I'll give them to you, okay? Okay. Okay, so... Is this just a recent resignment? Like... Yes, he, he did it on Friday. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> So he's not he's not moving to some he's not moving to one of our competitors he's moving to Oricon, so he's kind of done what Will's done in a way, he's he's moved to Will's competitor, effectively, <laughs> um, but not mine. We work with Oricon. Um, if you guys need access to anything and you're having issues getting that through Oricon, for example, then just let me know and I'll get that to you guys. Okay, I I I would have thought that Tristan would have told you by now, but. I'm gonna. I'm gonna maybe say that. Flipped his mind. But no, yeah, he wouldn't have changed his mind. No, maybe that slipped his mind that he didn't inform me. Look, look, it's, it's fine. It, it might be that it doesn't. He doesn't think it affects you, right? Yeah. So don't. I wouldn't worry about it at all. It's not going to change anything that you're doing. Just be aware um, that I'm just trying to make make that clear to you. And sorry for making that super public in front of everyone, but this oh, is yeah. the only time just, I talk to you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Good. Oh, and if I need, by chance, like if anything from like Cox resources, I can just message you on Slack or something. Yep. Like that, yep. Or... or you can send an email. It's um more. Okay. It's probably look if it's something that's like I need a Cox resource, you're probably better off emailing me. Okay. But um, yeah. No, it's you can just contact me any way you want. Okay. And as well, Tristan. Oh, cool. I've said this to Tristan as well. I've said just go like it's fine it's super relaxed right would that also mean then his email still works no his email won't work but he's still oh. look he's still around for for a week or two so i'm just wondering how to get into contact because i'm supposed to have he's a meeting still with him. he's still working at cox for a week or two so if if oh. when, whenever you meet whenever you meet with him this week are you do you have a meeting with him yep tomorrow Okay, well, that's probably when he was planning on telling you. Just act surprised, okay? Um, because I, I don't think he'll appreciate me telling you already, but whatever. Um, um, just, you know, in that meeting, you can arrange to get his private email, for example. Yeah, okay, cool. Because I, I, otherwise, I'm going to have to find you someone else at Cox, and that's harder than just saying to stick with Tristan. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you know definitely. What? It's fine to stick with him. Yeah, yeah. Just to, and he's he you know he's a really clever guy. So, yep. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> just ruin someone's surprise. Uh, well, I I was I I would have assu I assumed that Tristan would have told her already, and that was I was trying to say like hey, um, you. 
you can relax a little bit, you know? So, it's, it's all good. Oh, so many people leaving cocks. It's annoying. It's just opening opening up all these slots for you guys to walk into when, when It's you okay, finish. you can hide me after this year. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Babe, I'd take that to any day. <laughs> yeah, I'm a first year, you can hire me. Yeah, no, I'm not Jesus hiring first Christ. years. But, but, just so you're aware, um, next year, I'm going to ramp up our... Um, the um, work experience elective. So if you guys went, you guys do electives on your th in your third year, right? Are you talking about the work placement thing? Yes. Yeah, you can you can do work placement at Cox, um, but not probably not you, Nicole. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> You'll be done. But you know, um, you're not resigning anytime soon, Andrew. Are you? We'll see. No, no. It de it depends on like, the the thing is the, the Tristan was a little bit of a a buffer between me and the politics in the national group. Um, so like for example, uh, I really I I really think Rhino Inside, um, which is the like you guys are using Revit a little bit more now. You've used it three three weeks now. Yeah. Um, Rhino Inside is allows you to run Grasshopper in and control Revit. So all that shitty crap in Revit that I just hate doing, I can just use Rhino inside and I can write scripts for Grasshopper and distribute that to people using Revit, using it. And there's this annoying political bureaucracy in the company where there, there are a bunch of people that just don't think that that's a safe approach to using Revit. And they don't want to distribute. They don't. They don't want Rhino Inside necessarily being distributed. Um, and Tristan was kind of the one of the people that was stopping them from from harassing me. Um, harassing is the wrong word, but um, well, not these guys getting in my way from using it. So, like I and mind you, like this was there was Will was involved in this at one point. Um, there's this point where it wasn't it was installed on people's machines and because of the way Rhino had, had written it it got um, it, it got removed basically they couldn't use it and we had to reinstall it but because of the national system prior like between me getting it installed on the machines and then then needing it to be reinstalled the the permissions and all the rules had been taken away but they hadn't they hadn't told me about it and so they just gone like, oh, yeah, just let's not give, we're just taking, we're, we're not allowing them to do that anymore. And suddenly all these tools that we were using on projects, like they, like we were actually delivering our, like projects for clients using this tool, the tool just suddenly disappeared. And, it, and it's like, I suddenly have to argue with three people over how to do it. And Tristan was one of those people that were on, was on the perspective of, us like the computational designer and it was helpful and he's now gone and i don't think they'll replace him so the question is when you say hey you're going to resign soon um if the tyranny of the anti-rhino group grows nationally at cox and it affects me in sydney then maybe i might but not in the next year don't you hire like an army of first year and second year Rhino users? I do. I have. <laughs> I already have an army of code grads, mate. I've got. I've got a lot. Um, how many? We've got about. F I think we've hired 14, 14 code grads over the over the hi history of the degree. I don't know. That's a lot. Um. Well, most companies only hire one. It's or a small degree. Zero. Zero. Yeah. I've, I, a lot. I've hired I've hired double the number of students that are currently second years right now. So that's the other thing. A lot of people drop out of this course. <laughs> the, and what I, the reason I say that is last year Christina taught Christina taught one one five zero one two four zero and two one two one, and like basically. 
eighty-five percent of the students left. They were like, "Oh uh, yeah, this is too much." Ooh. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I think like um, with like a lot of the oh, for, no, term one wise. stuff, yep. uh, a lot of people were complaining. <laughs> yeah, look, you guys, there's probably there's probably already been a bunch of dropouts, right? From uh, term yeah. one. Probably. So, yeah, worry, yeah. Yeah, there it is. so it's my, also I I want to be I want to be the guy that is like, hey, guess what? This degree, the gears, the gears changed. Like you've got me this term, you've got me next term, and the term after. Okay, so, so what the pace that we're running at and the way that we're learning, if you like that. If, like if you, I guess if you like the way that we we went over the weave and dispatch thing today, this is something something I think you should have learnt term one, week two. Um, but I'm making sure you guys know it better. That's how we're going to learn for the next three terms. So mm. please don't drop out, unless you unless you really don't think this is right for you, like Amanda. I personally think I think a lot of people can agree. Like Christina's course was kind of going straight into all the stuff that we don't need to know yet and only now we're going so we're starting from the bottom. i know i know and that's because i i don't agree with the way it was taught and i'm i'm a pro trying to do it again basically whilst also that's teaching the stuff taught. whilst also teaching the stuff i need to teach you about structures so it's fun first style was like something really old school like kick it kick you up to the gate and you don't, you don't know what the hell is going on. Christ, Christina's style is the Spanish style, by the way. That's how they. That's how they Spanish. teach. That's how they teach kids in Spain. Yep. They. The you go to you go to uni and you're doing your uni class with master students. Like everyone's, like the degrees are all sort of mixed up and and the the teachers expect you to just know. Like most of the content. You're, you're kind of expected to learn it prior to the class and, and then the, the class is kind of like... Wait a sec, so basically I could be sitting with a master second year student with me. Yep, well, well, you, you kind of are, in a way, like... Um, I mean, technically, yeah. Nicole and Tim and... <laughs> 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 yes, Jesus. you are doing that right now, but that that's because this degree's inviting people to do it as an extra degree. But the thing is, I, like even for t like those guys, the 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 fifth year fifth year students and the um, I'm not has anyone actually done the architecture masters? No. Okay. So there's only there's probably only fourth year fourth years or fifth years here. The, the courses, they, they ramp up, you know, like first years in, in industrial design is definitely more relaxed than the fourth year of industrial design, right? Like they, debatable, actually. Yeah. Huh? Debatable. Really debatable. Yeah, but they expect they expect more out of you in the fourth year than the first year. Oh, yeah, one. yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's become easier for you in the fourth one because you've developed those skills. Yeah. That makes sense. But if they expected you to be able to produce what you produced in fourth year and first year, you'd all fail, right? A lot of us actually dropped out because of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, well. Well, no, that's be that's because the first the expectation at first year is high. But is it as high as fourth year? Now that looking back into it, probably not. Yeah. Look, I. Look, what I produced on day one of architecture was nothing compared to what I did on fifth year of architecture. Like, it like is incomparable. And now you know that I've been ten years out of architecture, I could probably go do the architecture degree in a year, um, without getting HDs. You know, like passing. Um, so, you know, there's. There ha you have to you have to consider that people have to approach things and learn them in a certain way. There's it's like pedagogy, so that's that I've that's what I'm trying to do with you guys. I feel like now we've survived Christina's courses. Like once you get past that, now we'll be a bit no, easier. No, but like, Christine, you will be doing Christina's courses again. Oh, okay. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Um, like Should I'm also back. gonna say is like I mean we just come out of like high, like high school as well. It's like. It's so different to uni, like, cause you go from like um, teachers handing you assignments and like 
you know, you're submitting what you need to submit and like you're meeting the criteria to like kind of like, I mean, like them kind of helping you along the way. Whereas like, and like go jumping straight to you to you kind of just like, you know, doing everything by yourself. And like, I think it's a big change with some people well. As you've well, got, you've got to look at what the agenda is though, Edward. So, yeah, 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 true, so yeah, if yeah. I was, if, uh, if I was suddenly put into a high school teacher's position, my attitude would change significantly. Um, okay. My my boss is expecting me to take care of you guys. Like I have a du- I would have a duty of care of taking care of you, as yeah. much as educating you. Mm-hmm. At the yeah. at the moment, my only duty of care is for you guys is like from a health and safety perspective. It's your responsibility whether or not you're being harassed or whatever or or you know <laughs> and and as well you know I I can I I have the ability to tell someone off if they're disrupting a class. But to be honest. It should be you guys putting the peer pressure on on that person to behave in class because it's your money that, or at least m- most of you, it's your money um, that's paying for it, and it's a lot of money, especially for the international yeah. students. They should be hardball, you know, making sure people aren't fucking around. Mm. Um. So. So there's that, but then as well, high school, like year twelve, high school. Every high school teacher there is trying to make sure you get an ATAR, right? Mm. You get you get an ATAR that that yeah. is that is good enough for you. They they want the other thing is they want the whole class's ATAR to be high because the way ATARs work, if the class's ATAR is high, it pulls it pulls the the the, the stragglers up a little bit as well. Yeah, it pulls um, the entire school up a bit. Or something. So. So they've got a curriculum that they have to follow and they've got to make sure you meet it. So so like sometimes, depending on how good the teacher is, they'll be like, just just answer it this way because it's it, you're more likely to get a better mark, for example. Like for example, yeah. I, I you know, I would in my physics tests I would go make the physics examples more complicated and I would get the answers I would get parts of the answers wrong because I was doing more than what I needed to do. And so we ended up having to be, t- like the class was taught like how to read the test to be able to get the mark when it, when it was, it's a physics class. Like it should be about learning about, you know, nuclear fission and, and momentum and blah, 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 blah. But an aspect of it is actually learning how to write within the framework of the world that you're in. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do with you guys but it's not about getting an ATAR, it's about the framework of that career that you're gonna have in the future. Mm, yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what, the thing is, no, people, like Will, Will can explain this quite easily. I don't have time to tell Will exactly what to do when he's working for me. On, like, in, on day one, when he comes into Cox sometimes, it's like, okay, I need you to go, write a script that does this I can't like if I if I had to be there telling him how to do every step then I might as well just do the work so yeah. so this this environment that I'm kind of trying to create with with these assignments is one where there is that vagueness where you have to think about what you need to do to produce the outcome to to show me what's going on someone is calling me I've got to, I've got to answer so I'll see you guys next week so yeah see you guys thanks Andrew hi see you guys I have no idea what Wix widgets are um David Hello, David. How are you? All right. Just uh, waiting for the long weekend, eh? So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, down. Yeah. Well, it means it means we have to do five days of work in this four-day week, and we have to do Pretty five yeah, five days makes... of work next week in that four-day week. It doesn't help help having a long weekend with deadlines the week after and the week after. Yeah, it doesn't really help. It doesn't. And it, yeah, I. <laughs> it's. I've always avoided doing the 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 four-day long weekend. Yep. Um, everyone, you know, you're gonna, like, 
Go on. Are you gonna bank it? Are you gonna bank it? Are you? And no, I can't bank it. Up? No, they won't let can't. they won't let us bank oh, it. Uh, okay. But what I, what I might do? I'm I actually haven't I haven't told my wife. And my daughter's got daycare, so I think I'm thinking of just bringing bringing her into the city yeah. and then just having yeah. like a relaxing day in the office, just tidying up all my affairs that I have had to haven't had to be like had the time to deal with over the last. So this is Friday you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like it's not like my it's not like my wife has the day off. Yep. Oh, well, we're still in lockdown, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> exactly. Like, so you're not so really going on a holiday. It's... So I'm just gonna yeah. I'm just gonna take a break, as in from every everyone. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, Danny. Danny has fixed up whatever the problem is. Yeah. What was it? I don't know. Oh, okay, it doesn't matter. That's cool. <laughs> so he's synchronized that that detached model, so it should be there. All right. So I'll put the flush, and I put it. I put new two de design options, so it makes it easy to keep the old one. Or maybe not. Now it's probably you overrid the families, right? So. Yeah, I would. I, I guess you know if you can treat it as a new family, it's probably yeah, better. That. It's probably That's better to treat treat it as a new family because it is. Um, it is. They're ve they're very hard to see the difference with from a distance. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, there's a, there's only a change angle change, right? So I, you know, when we pull at 100 mils. No, just there, that in no, the recess. It no. is, there is there is a few things changed. So yeah. Uh, okay. All right. It's yeah. It's because of the way the the bracket. It yeah. I've I've dealt with it. I've dealt with it. Okay. I don't think I need to. I don't. That's good. I'll have a look now. It's as and, uh, it, yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, I, the other the other stuff turned out pretty well. The the sun hoods that um, I put in a pack, so that was a good. Looks really good. Yeah, so we've actually think, you know we've actually yeah. done our job. Good. <laughs> yeah. So it was all um, you know, all there. It's just um, yeah, I'm just gonna wrap it up. Uh, at least I enjoyed enscaping your stuff. It's good. Oh, <laughs> is that the only thing that's been enjoyable? Is actually. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's like, Pretty much, I was gonna pick up all the other hard stuff on the projects that um, some of the team members can't handle, like um, construction coordinate, like detailing. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I think I'm the only one that can detail uh, construction level. Have you been? Team. How's so. how has the how has the relationship with um, Jared gone now that he's working for you full time? Well, it's a bit better. Um, he's more proactive now, but he's yeah. still still green in my eyes. Did so you still... did you talk so to did you talk to Christian about it or not? I did, yeah, I did. He told and, me, and he gave you some advice. A little bit, but he was he wasn't very political. Like he tried to be quite a be fair and stuff. So he wasn't really. I was pretty more um, quite blunt with my. So Christian didn't go to my level of. Um, I don't know of, of explaining working with Jared. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, like, I, I guess you know quite, Tristan. I mean, look, Christian's obviously trying to, you know, Christian's a nice guy, you know. Yeah. Um, I get, I get, I guess it could, it can be quite awkward with this new person that you ha you haven't really worked with coming up and saying like, hey, hey, I want, I want to shit on this person. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they, they said they had to monitor him basically. Yeah. Because they weren't, they didn't trust him because he was working from home one day right. a week. Okay. Which is, um, and he doesn't have children, so anyways, so now it's like, sorry, it's judgmental. Because uh, I used to do that when I was like, uh, when I didn't have a child, like, um, I didn't take working from home. It's only people with children that could have the opportunity if you've, you know, but anyway, it's it's a democratic society now, so you can do work from home anytime you want. But, um, and I did have to, mon I basically have to micromanage him just to make sure he does his work. So I actually, call them up we meet up every you know, regularly daily so that yeah i see what's going on because yeah i i guess i guess it i guess it's considered it's it's, yeah. it's an equitable society that everyone every, if 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 we're going to try and give people <clears throat> if we want to give parents the ability to have flex work we have we have to give everyone the ability to have flex work yeah that's right but that's what i didn't have when i was at other firms like maybe five years ago it was only given to people with kids right to, so you know well um, look there, there you go there, there's there's a you've you've got a fairly good idea of what might happen in the future as well if you want to do this working from home thing 
Oh, I've already got a kid now. That's the reason why I can get. No, no, but work. but it means it's probably even easier for you to to, to talk, have that conversation. You know? Oh yeah, it's pro it's easier now because the <laughs> way the management trusts me. I mean, <laughs> you know, it takes time as well. That's yeah. what with. But if to to ask for it from day one is very difficult, um, unless you've got like some sort of really non sort of you know family or medical yeah. reasons. Yeah. Um, but he did mention to me there's a medical reason he's got some stuff as well. So that's probably why Jared's Jared as well. So, um, okay. uh, it's, he's told me something. Um, private. Yeah. Don't don't yeah, don't private, tell me because yeah. I'm not aware yeah. of it. So don't tell me. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, maybe why he um, sometimes can rub people's shoulders that way. It's because um, something. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have a fairly um, good, it's, but, I have a fairly but, good idea of what type of you know thing it might it could be. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. fun. Like, yeah. So I guess yeah, there's okay. lots of different types. There's different types yeah. of people. Yep. And it's our duty of care to deal with that as well. Yeah, that's right. So, so um, but he's I've been giving him more less the harder stuff like detailing and giving him more. Uh, I mean, he's doing the SSDA pack, which is DA. So that's sure. a graduate level. So yeah. just moving yep. stuff on the hundred plans. That's, yep. Yeah. Look, look it's, uh, it sounds like it sounds like you've got a good plan in terms of like strategic doing like a strategic doing it strategically like if you you can you're basically building him up in a way yeah i'm trying to yeah i'm trying to promote him like saying if you want to be you know if you got to start email to consultants this is your job i'm just trying to give them pep talks sure sure, sure. Way, which hopefully encourages them to like you know i always said if you want to get more money <laughs> if you want to be a project leader then you have to start you know communicating this stuff and not just you know sit back and relax <laughs> in meetings he's got to like you know, he goes to the meetings, but then what's the point of him going to the meetings if he's not presenting anything? Mm. So I'm getting him to present stuff. Yep. And that forces him to actually. So work there's um, social pressure to the work yep. being good as well. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and then, as well, when he's presenting a meeting, he's got to like <clears throat> email, uh, like a list of to us or to the clients that what's been agreed. So at least he's listing into the meetings. So making him present and producing those materials. Um, is forcing him to actually work harder and mm -hmm. spend the extra hours. So he's a bit of a. If I was just telling him what to do and make him work longer hours, then that's not his motivation. So he's, the only motivation is self. Uh, what do you call it? Um, determination or something? Or ownership? They call it now. They yeah. want ownership. So that's the only way of getting ownership is to put him up in the, in the front of the client's face and yep. presenting. And they still don't trust him yet. So they're, they're not confident. Some st stuff. He's still who's construction. Who's, who's they? Uh, the design managers, so okay, the okay, construction okay. people, yeah, because yep. he doesn't have a construction experience, so he doesn't know things are put together and stuff. So I've been giving him tips before the meeting. You need to go and research on this product, so you make sure when you, the, you know, designing stuff, you know what you can tell the builder this stuff and you know stuff like you know just still a bit of guidance, not just um and because yep. you're supposed to be lead consultant and doing the research. So like he, he, you know. He was designing the rooftop with solar panels. You actually have to put it on an angle. So you, I just told him just Google search what's typical, what's the principles of installing a solar panel, and you got to put it on a slope angle. <coughs> so you use that ammunition in a meeting to say, oh, this, you know, I've typically found, you know, thirty degrees. The, yeah, it's a nice number. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we're having flat roofs and stuff, so we just, you know, oh yeah, no, like they, that. they so, usually, so, yeah, you usually have a like a sawtooth prop, like a um. Correct. Huh. Yeah, correct. You need a certain angle to get the most efficient out of a. The, yeah, 30, panel. 30 degrees yeah. is okay. Um, you know, you can perfect it to the, the, the specific site, but Sydney, you know, like 30, no one's going to make a 31.25 degree bracket. You, it's going to be 30. Um, yeah. And you want it pointing north, basically. Yep. That's right. So. And we're, we're pointing south our original, when we what? put it up. The yeah, we're pointing the solar panel set. <laughs> but that's where the roof was going, so we had to redesign all the roofs to face the slope to the north. So, because right. we've got solar panels on a, and we put it on a one degree roof pitch or something as well. One degree. So, what yeah. a waste! What a waste! <laughs> so it's not very efficient. Yeah, no. it's like the most efficient way of um. Well, you yeah. That you... was what Foster's did. So all. all Look, you can, I guess you can do it. Like you know, you you just you're just saying to a client though, like, hey, you're paying. You're paying this much for your solar panels, and you're only going to get like a ten percent return on on the power versus if we made it thirty degrees. You know. Yep. 
Yep, but it, uh, I found out that it's not even important, it's just a token, you know, gesture. So it doesn't even, we don't even get any green star points for these solar panels, which is Oh, brilliant. yeah, no, but well, yeah, it's, oh, that's well, that, I would consider a... green star points the token gesture. Oh, is it? Okay. But it's not enough, we need more to get green star. I, like, no, what I mean is, amount. what I mean is, yeah. getting green star is a token gesture, rather than, you know, are, there, are they actually trying to make a sustainable building? No, they're just trying to get clients to come in and, you know, <laughs> attract clients. Because that's all green stars is, it's just to get... Exactly, it's, it's tokenistic, just, right? Yeah. yeah, so that they, they fulfill their, whatever their, their requirements for meeting, you know, I don't know, the, the Kyoto Protocol or something. You know how Australia's now geared towards, um, that's um, why everything's...